Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vaults. Uh, today, today is a pretty awesome day. The uh, Mike just picked this up from the Lego store. He just got this. It's really funny. He's 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 actually getting more sets out of out of his car right now, so he'll be in the room in like one second. But um, am I holding this back the other way? No, I'm not. This is the right way. Uh, this is the uh, NASA Apollo Saturn V rocket set. This is um, 100. What? Sorry, no. It's 1,969 pieces. 1969. Ah, the year this thing launched. Okay, I thought that was pretty cool. That was a pretty funny thing. Uh, just with the the parts matching up. That was something I just noticed uh, right now with the year and the parts being the same. Uh, recommended for ages 14 and up and it is 21309. This is like a crazy fast selling set. Yeah, like fast selling set. Sorry, I don't know if I said that right. I'm so excited. The um, Mike said that the, this was like the last, the second to last one in the Lego store. Uh, it, the, the one we bought here in San Diego. So um, I haven't seen a Lego Ideas set sell out that fast that fast like I told Mike I was like oh, you don't need to get there early it's fine you can just kind of show up when the store opens uh, I didn't think I didn't think it was gonna be it was gonna be that crazy but apparently um, yeah apparently it's probably by this time right now it's sold out at least in the, uh, the one of the San Diego stores so um, quite a popular set didn't realize that was gonna be the case but um, anyways let me just show you the back of the box before I open it up uh, you can see that the thing is going to appear in about five, uh, five different chunks. And yeah, and then Mike's coming in with a bunch of other bags of Lego sets right now. So five different chunks, and they break apart, I believe, in the exact proper same way that this real Apollo Saturn V rocket actually broke apart back in 1969 when it did the launch. So... That's pretty cool. It's not just a very accurate and cool looking model. It is a model that mimics what it should, you know, it, in all of its parts. In as much detail as it could at the scale that it's going to be at. This, I think, is going to measure at one of the tallest Lego sets. In exactly, one meter. exactly one meter. So this might, this is like in the running for probably like tallest three or tallest five or something. It's going to be like 39 inches. 39 inches. So it's massive. Yeah. So, anyways, anyways, that's that's what's going on. I have a feeling there's going to be some nice. Uh, let me switch to this camera. I have a feeling there's going to be some nice, uh, fun little bits of artwork and information on the manual. You know, talking about the original designer, so we can show off a little bit more uh, what this manual's got on the in store for us. And um, <clears throat> by the way, uh, some of the other information that I boom. Yeah, boy. All right. Woo. Okay. There's the there's the manual. Let's see how many? Let's see how many. Holy block of holy. Okay. That is a screen completely full. That is a screen completely full <laughs> of. Uh, zoom out for you? Yeah, yeah. Zoom it out, buddy. That's zooming in. Zoom in. All right. Um, so yeah, I see a I see a manual number one, or a bag. Sorry, bag number one. Uh, let me just move that off to the side. Okay, there's a bag five, there's a ten, there's a eight, four, six, eleven. Maybe it goes up to eleven at the maximum count. Two, three. Oh, nope, I see a twelve. This is bag number twelve. Uh, so maybe twelve is the highest. Yeah, there's a six and a seven. So yeah, there's twelve different bags. Bag one, bag twelve. Um, obviously, we're starting with bag one. Well, let's check out the manual. And this manual looks like a book. It doesn't look like uh, your standard manual, but that's sort of expected for a Lego Ideas set. Let's get this thing open. And um, I actually saw this little article or a little bit of news online about the Saturn V. Um, actually, I'll, I'll mention it after, after I show you guys the manual. So I've never seen this. Ooh, this is like a really stiff sort of hard, not a hard cover, but like a... It's not, not such a soft, soft cover. So this is a little bit information about the Apollo program. This is some of the old images of the real rocket ship back in 1969. Yeah, May 25th, 1969 was the launch. Um, oh, wow. And it's like just past. It's just past that date. It's like, what, June 1st right now? Okay. So this is the actual, uh, this is the Lego design. Some of how it's looking. This is... Some more information about the rocket and the different pieces of it. So it shows you sort of 
how the actual moon trip went. These are some of the original guys working on it. Um, actually, these are, that's <laughs> funny. These are the designers, but they have them dressed like in 1969, uh, sort of like dress for the era. That's kind of funny, but those, those I believe are the actual designers of the set. And then, um, okay, and then they've just got the rest of this stuff in different languages, like they always do. So they knocked that out in a bunch of different languages. And anyways, yeah. So this is uh, not a bad thing. Did this thing just readjust for like being way too dark? Why does that image look so dark? This, okay. Maybe it, maybe it just looks dark. I don't know if you guys know, but. So bags one, two, three, four, five, and six make the base. And then bags seven, eight, nine, ten make almost the rest of the rocket. And then, it, well, yeah, you can pretty much assume what the next page would. Really? They're all stuck together. Why is that page? Oh, there we go, yeah. And then 11, 12, make sort of like the last bits. And well, here we go. So there's the manual. There's everything that hopefully you guys need to know. Oh, wow, we got some people jumping in, following. Absolutely love seeing everybody jumping in on the live stream. And uh, all right, so without further ado, I'm just gonna get, oh, okay. Wonderful manual, love it, but you know, the, this this more stiff out outside cover, you really do have to make sure that uh, these pages wanna stay open. That, I don't want that to be an ongoing thing, you know. You know they say when you get like a brand new book, like if you if you're buying a book and you get a new one, you should you should sort of like open every page and kind of fold it open and that's like good for the book and it also helps keep it open. Anyways, hopefully we can start it off right now. And are you guys noting that noticing this? It kinda looks like dark almost. I'm like gonna turn up the brightness here a little bit. Are you guys noticing did, that? Did I move the, the arrow screen? Oh yeah, you did. Here, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry hold on. Let me let me turn yeah. this light back down. I the okay. I was like, I was looking at it. I was like, this image is so dark. Yeah, okay. I think we're I think we're good now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's just the middle ring. Okay. Here we go. Um. All right. Let's get this thing open. Booyah! Okay. You guys want to hear a funny bit of information about this set? Not funny. Actually, it's kind of horrible. Um. I don't know why I said funny. It's it's funny in, from like a sort of objective standpoint. But, um, okay, so this set, we're, we bought it first day out on the shelves in America, um, and I believe worldwide. Hello, everybody, welcome, thanks for subscribing, Charlie Davies. Um, but this is, this is, this is true. Um, I got this, I got this, like, email, and, uh, there's, uh, there's some links to it. I, I didn't leave the links in the description, but you can find this, um, this Saturn V, NASA Apollo Saturn V rocket, this idea set, released today, apparently was already released in China from Lepin. So we've talked about that, that, that company that steals Lego designs, but I believe this is the first time that Lepin has um, stolen a Lego design and been able to release it before the actual release date of the set. Think about that. That is crazy. How does how is that even possible? How does the company how is it able to release a Lego set before Lego releases their Lego set? Isn't that isn't that insane? Like I just I heard about that and I was just like that's it's kind of sad uh, because it means that Lepin is like so deep in like the production of Lego like they know everything that. They probably knew all the parts and the instructions. They probably knew everything about um, what they needed to know uh, what, for making for making this set before it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got this set out. A copycat was released before the real version. Isn't that nuts? Like, I don't know. I like it's 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 laughable in the sense that it's just like wow. Like they have the they are so deep into the operation of Lego that I always thought it was like, oh, they, you know, they saw the pictures and they and they had their own designers and they figured it out as close as they could get and they released it very close to the same release day. But no, they must they must know everything. They must have they must have people working like deep within Lego giving information to Lepin. That's like my only guess. Like my only sort of possible reasoning behind them getting a set out before Lego can get their own set out. Isn't that crazy? 
What is the reason you started YouTube? That is a question from Quinton Womack. Um, well, I mean, it was kind of like I was doing a lot of production stuff um, before. Not a lot, but I was. Just start, I wanted to get into it. That's that's probably a better thing. I, I wanted to get into production stuff when I uh, moved back to the United States. I was out of the states for several years, and then um, and then. I was just having conversations with, with people and my brother is a YouTuber and we had sort of, he had an idea on how to do one thing and we were talking about doing this and then he had this massive bit of Lego and we're like, hey, let's make a Lego YouTube thing. What's going on? <laughs> oh, the stream title. There's always one thing about the you stream. You always every forget about this. This is the yeah. first time since the only, this is actually the only the second time I've forgotten it. This is officially the second time I've forgotten the stream title. Uh, two one three zero nine. Durr. Durr. You don't remember. You don't memorize every single set number. Um. Oh yeah, the stream title. Yeah. The is. most notoriously forgotten change up every stream we do. Um. There we go. But got into YouTube because it seems like a really fun thing to do. Thank you. Um. And, uh, yeah. And Lego was just, was just everywhere and everything. And I was like, wait a second, let's do a Lego breaking things again. Oh, there we go. There's so many of these curved, there's so many of these curved, uh, giant pieces here that they just cover every other part of the piece. So I'm like, I'm constantly losing parts for this set already. Woo! All right. Very interesting. Look at this. So this is a uh, uh, this is kind of a different technique. This is cool. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken. Oh wait a second. You know what? I'm gonna do this exactly the way they want it to. So there's this half piece in here. Not like it really matters, but I do want to make sure that that. Okay, yeah. There we go. I'll, I'll attach it exactly where it should go. All right. So this thing's gonna be one of the tallest Lego sets ever when it's done. Granted, it's a rocket, so it's not like, you know, the Disney castle set is also one of the tallest sets, but that's also a castle. So the comparison in size is, uh, you know, height is one thing, but it's not like gonna be the actual largest set in terms of mass. Not even close, but it's gonna be one massive thing. It's gonna look pretty sweet. It's gonna be awesome. I, I can't wait to get in the studio. I think it's gonna work really well as a display set um, because it's gonna be really impressive in its height, but it's not gonna be overbearingly, um, like it's not gonna take up a lot of space at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's gonna be thin. Um, it's, we can't, you can display it on its side as well. I kinda wanna have this thing standing up cause I think that'll be like super impressive, but then again, I haven't, built the thing yet, so I don't really know what its most impressive state is going to be until it's, until it's there. Um, cool. Oh, dang it. Did I, did I do, oh, dang it. Yeah, I'm supposed to have this. Ah! Breaking it out. Let's try that again. Um, oops. Get that back in there. All right. This is better. Opposite end this way. You need oh you do need the chair. All right, Grant Miller, people are jumping in. What is your favorite big fig? Oh, good question. Favorite big fig. Now there's a ton of we've got all the Marvel and DC big figs out there. We have all the superhero or anti-superhero, the villain big figs. They're all out there. Um, uh, is one of them my favorite? Uh, I don't know, that's a good question. I don't know I don't know if, if they have to necessarily come from there. Um, the Hulk big fig that's coming up, or I think maybe some people might have them already. I don't know if those sets are out yet. Um, those ones, like that Hulk one in armor looks pretty awesome because he, he looks like uh, that old school Hulk from the comics where he's like the leader of a dystopian earth after like the apocalypse or something. He looks a lot like that. Um, so, that that Hulk big fig looks like he will be my favorite, assuming that of course he gets made. Um, 
out of a current existing one. Ooh, maybe just regular Hulk, too. Because he just seems like the most appropriate guy to be in big fig form. Uh, Bane looks like he could be cool. Dang it. There we go. Really have to make sure. There's a lot of these, like, kind of open, open uh, jumper pieces that are on a little bit of a rotatable scale. So you have to make sure you get this in just the right spot. The studs want to be a little bit funny with you sometimes. Ooh, but once it's all in there, super strong. Samuel L. Jackson just joined our subscriber list. Welcome, Mr. Samuel. <laughs> we just got we just got Samuel L. Jackson just subscribed to us. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are there snakes on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, that's right. Um, sweet. Welcome to the welcome to the stream, sir. Yeah, no snakes. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of these snakes on this. Yeah. I don't know if I can I yeah, uh, I don't know if I can do the full quote on this on this live stream for you, but all right. Now, I don't know if this little tab piece is going to really matter which side I put it on. Blue bear. Blue on the top side. This is cool. Now, this looks like whatever I'm doing here, Sam Jackson. <laughs> really? <laughs> we just got Sam Jackson to subscribe to us as well. So we just got Samuel L. and Sam Jackson. Mario Plush Films. Wow, we got people jumping onto the stream. I believe this is uh, the first time this set is coming onto uh, YouTube. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe somebody else has done this review. Um, I do not know. But. This is the first day it's officially released in the States. We just picked this up opening day at the Lego store, and it was crazy, crazy busy, according to Mike. He was there. Mike said this was the second to last set at the store before they got sold out. Um, so, yeah. But I think also that was partially because there wasn't a limit on the number you could buy. At least uh, I don't believe that was the case at this store. So. Sometimes sets do get sold out faster if uh, there's no limit because then people can buy like multiple of them. Sometimes, dude, Red Rick. Sorry, hello, welcome, thanks for subbing, and I probably said your name incorrectly. Oh, look at this. This is kind of interesting because these side panels all have a bit of this posability. Nicholas Kurtz, welcome, thanks for subbing. We got people jumping on, jumping on like it's nobody's business. All right. What the heck am I building? All right. Well, you know what's nice about this? They put this at a building age recommendation of 14 and up, which is, I think, the second highest difficulty rating. I don't think it gets any more difficult other than 16 and up, and then that's it. Like, like, like a Lego set doesn't get more complex than 16 and up, but um, they put it into a bunch of different little bags, so... Because there's 12 different bags, um, you're not really going to be dealing more than with more than a couple hundred parts at a time. Boom! Like it's automatically, it's like so much easier than dealing with um, a Lego set that's just you know you deal with 700 pieces at at, a, at any given moment. So yeah, this one this one's just going to be a lot more fun to put together. You can see it's going coming together a lot faster. Welcome, wizard! Welcome everybody that's subbing, jumping on. Love to have you guys checking out the live stream. Hope you guys are enjoying this uh, this thing. We have we have a few more people watching this live stream than maybe our average one. I think that's because this is uh, one of the more time relevant pieces. I mean, it doesn't really get much more time relevant than picking up a Lego set on opening day and building it immediately, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I can I can sort of see why maybe a few more people will be interested in checking us out. And so that means if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am just on bag number one. Multi Demon 125. Another. I think I think that's what I'm reading. Sometimes I just look up LJWX 2401. Okay, welcome. So I can't I can't read everybody's names. I mean I can. Well no I can't. Go. I'll, I'll be too slow at building. Welcome, people. Welcome. Thanks for subbing. Love the support. 
we are jumping on. I believe my brother's also live streaming at this exact moment as well. That's what he told me he was gonna do, but I haven't I haven't checked obviously because I'm here. Uh, Rin Kuro, welcome. Thanks for subbing. All right. I don't think this matters which orientation because they're all identical on every side. Oh, well, here we go. This looks like special detailing, but I don't think it is. I think because the uh, the lander has has uh, gold um, telescope pieces used for the legs in another part of the set, that uh, maybe these are just being used as better support systems. Ooh, here we go. So we're not doing uh, an exact repeat of this of this next build. The base is entirely different, but we are doing something similar to it. So I'm going to be building almost a second one of these right now, but on top of this base. If you like Ninjago, please check out that. Duh, hello, hello everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time in the stream. Hey Jack, what is your favorite ninja from Ninjago? Um, my favorite ninja from Ninjago? I don't know if I really have a favorite character. I haven't really been invested in Ninjago as much as other people really. I know the basic backstory and the basic like weapons and characters and stuff, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I like, in terms of like just the way the minifigs look, I really like the way uh, Ash looks as a character from the from the newer Hands of Time series. Um, but like as one of the main characters, you just kind of have to go with like one of your favorite colors, right? I feel like that's how a lot of it works. You're just like, oh, I like this color. I like this guy. Um, so I don't know. I would probably go, I'd probably go with Kai. I mean, it's pretty, pretty safe and easy be like okay I like fire I like red uh, Kai I like Kai Bertie Appleby welcome thank you for subbing I, I'm, I don't know if if I said your name right because there's a by Appleby maybe that was it Chris Melvin welcome thanks for subbing people are jumping in it's happening like crazy hope you guys are uh, enjoying the live stream now this one it's gonna be a long stream. It's almost 2,000 pieces. Exactly 1969, Captain Lego America, welcome. Um, so that's gonna, that's a lot. That's a lot of pieces. There's no two ways around it. It's gonna be a ton of parts that makes up this whole thing. So, um, you know, it's gonna be decently long, but if you can't tell, this is a, the build itself is actually going pretty fast. It is going pretty darn fast. And I'm gonna be, coming out with a Ninjago minifigure collection for tomorrow. I was actually really close to finishing the edit last night, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't finish the edit last night because I was watching an episode of House of Cards. <laughs> I was like so close to finishing, and then I was like, ah, I just need to, I'm, I'm bad when it comes to that stuff. You just binge watch like a show or something, and then your life is almost like on hold for like a whole day. I'm probably like eight episodes into House of Cards, um, which is too much considering it was released, I think, on Tuesday. And each episode is like 45 minutes to like an hour long or something. So, yeah, I've been watching the heck out of that show. But it is so, it's just so good. I stayed up late watching it and I and I got like, I, I, I slept in. I slept in a little bit, a little bit too much, I think, this morning. Um, no shame, no shame in that. I just... Just was watching too much of that House of Cards. Now I see you guys in the comment section constantly giving shout outs to your own channels. Now, I, feel, I haven't done this in a while, um, but I feel like it's because I haven't done this in a while, it keeps on happening more. Um, but yeah, guys, don't be, don't be giving your own channels shout outs. It's, it's just common, it's general common courtesy between YouTube, oh, what did I just do? Between, between, channels and youtubers like there's plenty of big channels that i i you know i'd love to just go on there and start promoting my own channel and stuff but generally you're not it's not it's not considered it's 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 not considered great practice to be constantly jumping onto people's streams and or 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 comment sections and saying hey look at me look at me look at me um generally speaking it's better to just go out and make lots of content that you think people are gonna like and then Naturally, the subs and the people come towards you guys. So, 
I might do what I call like a purge, which is where I just block a lot of people that just constantly promote themselves. I can't do it obviously now because I'm, I'm building and stuff, but if I, I sometimes I go through the comment section and I, um, I just kind of like look at the general thing. And if I see somebody's name pop up a couple of times and they've asked for a few subs a few times, um, I either, I either like block them or ban them or whatever. Um, if I see that happening over and over and I used to do it a lot more in the beginning of the live stream and I haven't done it as much, but I might go through, um, maybe this stream and just be like, okay, this guy's kept asking, kept asking, kept asking, boom, you're out of there. And I know people like to sort of, you know what, I'm going to add this on first. It doesn't say to, but I think it's just easier. Um, I think people like to argue their way into it. They're like, oh, but I only asked once or twice or five times. Don't ban me. I'm like, eh. It's just easier to just blanket. Blanket that. Boom. Here we go. So I think we just finished bag one. And if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to. Oh. Weird. It wants me to. It wants me to attach this. Okay. All right. I'm game. It wants me to attach. Look at that. So this is this is this is what it looks like officially at the end of bag one. So all right, and just two little spare parts. These are the only two spares. Put them off to the side. Get bag two. Boom, boom, boom. We are officially one twelfth of the way there, guys. Wow, Jack Savage. Oh what? Because I because I ban people that constantly break the rules. Um, no, it's just one of those things. Because shoutouts are things that like. I, I guess, I suppose I could put shout out onto the banned word thing in Nightbot, but then of course people will very quickly and easily uh, figure that out that that's a banned word, so they'll, they'll, they'll use another word for it. Um, so generally speaking, yeah, the, the easiest and best way to, uh, to prevent people from, from abusing those types of rules is you just kind of go through and, uh, hold on, how many parts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, fourteen long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's a lot of these gray pieces, and it can be off by two studs. And if you count them wrong in the beginning, then you might end up making a massive mistake later down the line because you didn't realize you built the base off of a piece that is just one stud off. Um, okay, let's get some let's get some parts on here. All right. No movie spoilers. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. We know. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to be all threatening and stuff when I was like, I'm gonna ban people. I just, I just, I just noticed the trend of 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 the way people were posting was because there was there's kind of I feel like the way streaming goes is like there's 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 like really good like days or there's even like good weeks where you feel like the content and the people posting on it are kind of like on point. And then you don't have to enforce as much. <laughs> and then as soon as you stop enforcing that, you know, the internet is forever. And then all of a sudden you've got people, you know, just doing a bunch of self-promotion on the on for their channel as opposed to just watching what the stream's about. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Jack, Mike should build with you. He should, and he totally would be building with me if this wasn't the very first day the set came out. And there, there's no alternate um, set of instructions online. I already checked. So, you know, yeah, because it would have been way faster. Um, I, Mike and I always have a lot more fun when we stream together. And I think people also sort of, like, appreciate it. Because, like, we get to just kind of mess around and just talk about whatever. Um, here, it's like we, I, I answer questions and stuff. But a lot of it is me just, like, kind of talking, too. You know, like, as opposed to, as opposed to like, Mike and I just, like, chilling. Um, but if there isn't two set of instructions, it, I just can't justify like both of us working on it. Like it doesn't actually save as much time. We did it once or twice, tried to sort of split it up as best we could, but it didn't really save that much time. So we're just kind of like, nah, all right. Is this a times two? This better not be. Oh my gosh, it's a times four. What I'm building right now is a times four step. All right, all right, let's do this. Let's get, let's get more of these out here. <laughs> I was doing it. I was like, wait a second. I'm building up a side panel. This feels like it could be more than just one of us. Okay, let's do this. All right. 
Well, at least I discovered this pretty early on in the step. It's always annoying to finish one completely and then look back and it says, oh, time's four. And you're like, dang it. Okay. All right. So what is on your gut? You know, it's still gray in San Diego. Hey, you guys, hype as well. The new big movie adaptation of the Bible? <laughs> what are you? Is that a joke? I mean, I honestly don't know if you're joking or not. I haven't, I haven't heard of it. Sounds like you could be joking. Um, I hope it's not too different from the book. Yeah, sounds like a joke. Um, no, I haven't seen a lot of those those movies. I did watch the the the, the Ark movie. I thought it had a pretty cool intro sequence with like uh, all the evolution and stuff, all the like changing of the world or whatever. I can't remember, uh, but I don't really remember much else outside of that. Um, Hey, Jack, what do you think about the new LEGO Ideas old fishing store set? Oh, right. You know what? A lot of new set pictures were revealed this week. Tons of new stuff. Mike is going to have, uh, I think, a good time making the news this week uh, because so much new stuff was revealed. I think it looks excellent. I think it looks really good. Um, yeah, this that was a set that um, LEGO really didn't have to change much. Oh, here, here's the um, yeah, that fishing store set looks really authentic to what the original design was, and so I think a lot of people are just going to be happy with it. Um, people voted on it; they wanted that type of set, and they're getting exactly that. And I've already, I've already been looking into how I want to possibly integrate the fishing store set into our into our city, make a nice sort of because it, it's sort of like a, a detached sort of rural old place. You can't just like put it right next to a bunch of modern buildings because uh, it would look a little bit out of context, I think. So I've been playing around with like how I want to fit the fishing store into uh, into our city. And I think I've got an idea or two. So yeah, I'm excited for it, to answer your question. I, I, think, it's, I think it's built well, I think it's adapted well. Um, I know a lot of people were like not happy about the caterum, and stuff with the the way Lego adapted the Caterham Seven from ideas. Personally, I thought it was all right, uh, but but yeah, that is that's a pretty common sort of point for for people to be upset because they vote on a set, they voted on 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 an idea, and then Lego says okay, and then they have to change it. I mean, I understand why they change it, but um, when it changes to the way where. A, you know, it defeats the purpose why some people voted on it in the first place, then I think that is kind of too bad. It is, most of the time, I, it's really just, it's not Lego's fault, but they do have to, they do have to redesign it to a certain extent to make it feasible. Here we go. Oops, that, that A is not all the way on there. You see that? Okay. But yeah, so many new set pictures have been revealed this week. I really, and all within the last couple days, um, I'm loving the Powerpuff Girls for Dimensions. I think I'm more excited about the Powerpuff Girls. Um, I think they revealed one of the Ninjago sets. Uh, what else did they reveal this week? It's like Powerpuff Girls, Ninjago sets. Some information about the next uh, Mighty Micros is coming out. Has come out. I think they're gonna do a um, a what you call it a. Uh, it's Ninjago, or no, 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 no. For Mighty Micros, it's going to be, um, they're gonna have a Guardians of the Galaxy one. But it's, I think it's just supposed to be Gamora and Star-Lord. So I'm like, eh, you know. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Doesn't really, that didn't really uh, excite me that much when I heard it. I was like, okay, Gamora, Star-Lord. Um, what else? What else did they reveal? Um, but yeah, no, I think the Powerpuff Girls is awesome. Super disappointed that they didn't put Mojo Jojo in as a, as a fig. I would have absolutely loved a Mojo Jojo minifigure. Um, I liked the Powerpuff Girls show. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. I thought that was a fun show. Um, and Mojo Jojo was like one of the most entertaining supervillains of all time. He's so much fun to watch. I was more of like a Mojo Jojo fan, I think, than than a, than a Powerpuff Girls fan. Uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think building a crawler vehicle mock to go with this set is a good idea? Yes, yes, I do. I do think that. Um, 
I bet you, I bet you anything uh, with the release of this set, we are gonna be getting, so because the scale of this is awesome. Like, cause they really did make an awesome looking lander for this uh, Apollo set. And uh, you know, we have those, we have the great micro figs or statuette figures really uh, that are making up the astronauts. Yeah, a crawler would be awesome. Um, I think that's a great idea. And if you build one, we might, we might copy that design and put it up next to this place for here. Cause I think that could be really, really cool. Um, oh wow. So many of these. Okay. We're putting just a huge amount on this. See, look at this. It's interesting. They're saying that this is like 14 and up. Cause right now, I mean, if you're looking at the way this thing is being put together, there was maybe a little bit of complexity in, in bag one, but this bag two is like as gravy as it gets in terms of just simplicity. Um, boom, 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 boom. Man, my English just went down fast. We have a lot of non-native English speakers watching. I feel like that's, that's always sort of the case now, especially when you're live streaming to the whole internet. It's just kind of like, um, you know, it's just the way it goes. I have noticed, I have noticed like on YouTube channels when they always, uh, they like to sort of make fun of their, um, you know, they, they get comments and stuff and sometimes they'll, they'll talk about like insulting comments that they get on the channel. That's such a common thing now for YouTube people to do like, oh, like what are people saying to us in the comment section? And it's almost always like really mean, <laughs> mean stuff because, you know, uh, that's sort of what they choose because it's entertaining and, you know, it's the internet and stuff. But they always make fun of people that like don't um, write stuff correctly in English. And I used to teach English to like non-native English speakers. And it was just kind of like, I was looking at it. I was like, oh yeah, those are just like general grammatical mistakes that like people that didn't grow up with the language tend to make. And then they make fun of it later down the line. I'm just like, ah, I always feel bad. Cause I'm just like, Dude, people, people writing in English that it's not their native language. English is like a such a non-intuitive language to try to learn outside of. So anyways, I'm not going to be making fun of anybody's misspelling or uh, grammatical errors on this channel. I'll, I'll get confused by them. Don't get me wrong. I'll be like, I don't understand what you meant. But I'm not going to be like, you're dumb. Because I, I, can, I, can I can see where the struggle comes from. Having tried to, having been an English teacher at one vector in my life. The chant is crazy. All right. So this, in theory, boom. <gasps> okay, we're attaching this. Okay, so this is, this is the thing is right now, this thing is attached just by this two by two brick here. So this whole top part is like super, super loose. Now I'm gonna move all these chunks out of the way and see if I can't get this piece to go on just where it needs to. Being a bit vague on how this is supposed to really attach. Okay, so this is supposed to attach. Oh, gosh. Okay. Wait a second. Why does this look so not good? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So USA is supposed to. Okay, that. <laughs> why did I not? Why did I not figure that out? Okay. Um, where? I just want to make sure that I'm attaching this to the proper space because I don't want this to be I don't want this to be off by any by any tiny margins. So you, if you attach this incorrectly on one spot, then you're kind of stuck there for the rest of. Okay, I think I got this that got this on correct though. Well, pretty much this thing is touching the bottom like perfectly. Okay. I always, I always don't like it when they're when they're not totally, when you can't see like the exact, like a good sort of spot to have this thing attached to. So I'm looking at it and it's like, should this have been lower? 
maybe. It might have been. I don't know. Hold on, let me just check. I just want to make sure that this thing is attached in the right place. Ugh. It's so aggravating when when they're like not that precise about how you how they want it to be. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be just perfectly flush here though. Ugh. All right, well, if I mess it up, then I, can, I guess I can just pull off these side panels. Um, if you guys tuned into the stream yesterday, uh, like I, I totally messed up that, that um, Stormtrooper helmet build because the instructions were just completely off. And uh, I was like, I might tune into the stream later today, and I didn't. Um, but let me just say, okay, so here we go. We're done here. Looking good. This is huge. Okay, let me put that down. And uh, all right, we're gonna be adding a ton more paneling here. All right. Um, so let's get this. Go Another big times four thing. Do you think clones will return in Star Wars franchise? Um, maybe. The thing is, so many people love the Clone Wars, and it has like a really big following now. I don't. I don't. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, Lego, or not Lego, uh, Star Wars, Lucas Arts, or whatever, might might want to revisit it just because, yeah, it's like really popular and people liked it a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised if they made like another series that was like a spin off, uh, but maybe within like the same time period or something like that. I, I think that could happen. Um, but no, I was building that um, helmet yesterday, and holy, oh man, that thing was way, way, way more um, incomplete in terms of uh, the instructions because I found, a, I found a, a series of pictures from what I believe is the original designer when he put his helmet together and I can tell based on his pictures and like what's in the designer file that he didn't even follow what was in his designer file because it, it doesn't make sense. There's like whole sections of the helmet were just floating in space and they're not actually attached to anything. So that's why I was having so much trouble in the beginning, like trying to figure out like, wait, why are these parts not ever gonna be together? And it was because the helmet was just floating in space and the instructions weren't really totally complete. And then I looked at his build pictures and there was, he had redesigned the entire helmet. So I did probably three and a half, four hours of redesign work on the helmet and building up like a strong base. And I kept on thinking that like it was gonna get easier as it went by. Um, and I think that I'm finally hitting that point, but it took me to about step 12 and every step was just a huge amount of parts. Um, so, yeah, so I, I did do that. Uh, I did, I have, the, I have the base of the helmet completed now. And I even built up a little stand and stuff to kind of keep it from falling over uh, because it's really, really, oh wow, people are just jumping on. People are jumping onto the stream. So many subs. Thank you for subbing, everybody. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, currently describing my woes of yesterday's semi-failed live stream. We did it. We did a fun. We, you know, I, I moved on to just a regular Lego set review after I failed at the at the helmet. But I can say that. Um, so I messed up with the with the building of that of that helmet. But I. Um, but I've got the base of it done now, and I've got it to the point where I can do a pretty comprehensive and pretty easy-going build uh, from here forward with the rest of that helmet. Oops, actually that goes down to this one, yeah. Um, put that down here first. Let's get those American flags on there. So cool. I love these little like American flag prints. I think they look really good. That one goes there, so I'm not, whoa. That was totally random. There's like, you know, they're all upside down and that one just like happened to be the American flag piece. Um, so tomorrow, I want to do it tomorrow. I want to do the live stream of the Stormtrooper helmet tomorrow just because I have all the parts for it and I've got the base of it built up. And right now the thing is a little bit delicate. It's a little bit delicate, not in a huge way, but definitely a little bit delicate. Um, because I haven't attached the front and back half of the helmet. You kind of have to build them in two different sections. 
And um, the way this thing is built, I have done so much extra internal detailing for the for the Stormtrooper helmet. And it is gonna be bigger, I think, bigger than a regular life-size one. So we're gonna have a massive Stormtrooper helmet in the studio, which is gonna be really, really sweet. All right, okay. And um, by the way, if you guys are joining this stream a little bit later and you missed the sort of introduction info about the set that I'm building, uh, let me just go through that very quickly. This is the uh, NASA Apollo Saturn V rocket Lego idea set. It came out today, at least in the States. I don't know if it had early access in other parts of the country or other parts of uh, the world, but we bought this here in California and uh, picked it up from the Lego store and immediately just drove back to the studio and started building it. So we, we are, we're building this as fast as we possibly can in terms of getting this out onto the uh, onto the interwebs, so to speak. And uh, ooh, it's only attached here. It's only attached here at the bottom. It's not attached. These things kind of want to like flip away right now. These, these top walls, sorry. Sorry if you can't see that, but it's only attaching, there's only, it's only up here, and then the rest of this is kind of just leaned away. So let me see if I can yeah. make sure to get those parts on. And then this is the last one. Get that onto here. Oh, there, 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 there we go. Okay. Yeah, so this thing kind of wants to like, split away right now, because we don't have any attachment pieces. That looks a little bit crooked, but that's fine. All right, let me move this over, and I'm sure, okay. So, I think I'm gonna have to lay this down on its side in order for you guys to see what the heck I'm doing, even though that's not really, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be put together. Actually, I can tell you right now that it's not, but um, I do want you guys to be able to see sort of how it's getting getting constructed. That's sort of part of the reason why. 1969 is when man landed on the moon. Yep, and it's got 1969 pieces, which, uh, I mean, it doesn't get better than that, does it? I thought that was so, I thought that was so funny. Um, the Lepin copy set has 2,009 pieces. Um, and I don't think they, it, it's got more parts to the build. I think, honestly, that Lepin includes just lots of extra spares because they know that the quality of their bricks isn't as good and they get a lot more um, false molds. So they add a ton of spares and that boosts the part count of their sets. Um, so yeah, 1969, that couldn't have been an accident. And, and, I, and I'm kind of curious now, like is there gonna be a part that like should have more pieces or some area that has like a few extra parts sort of unnecessarily because the designers really wanted to hit that 1969 mark. They probably got super close to it and they're like, wait a second, if we just change up the parts a little bit, we can have you know, 1969 pieces, that'd be great. I think that's how it worked out. What is your favorite speed champion set? Ooh, favorite speed champion set? Um, I like, um, I mean, the Bugatti was cool. I like some of the new sports car ones. What's the, uh, I liked the Bugatti. There was another one. I liked uh, the 40 year anniversary for Ford. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought they did a good job with that. Um, now this is gonna be attached. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this wants to go onto the outside of these little parts here. So I'm gonna roll this around. Okay, so that's where we're attaching this to. Oh, there's like some spare pieces that are kind of rolling around and getting crushed underneath the rocket. All right, let me see, move this around. But yeah, I would say maybe the Bugatti or the uh, the Ford, what did they call it exactly? It was like the Ford GT, uh, yeah, it was like, it was the one where they, they honored the old school uh, Ford GT from like the 60s or something when it won when it won a particular championship and then they had the new one. I thought that was really cool. It was a good build for both cars. Um, and I think I just generally, I kind of like the way Ford cars look. I don't know. Wonder Woman looks meh. Are you talking about which set? Um, I, I like, we actually, um, uh, right before I started the live stream, my, my brother 
sent me a message. He was like, hey, we just got like another Lego thing sent to the house or whatever. And uh, it was like, it's the new Wonder Woman, um, the DK book thing. So we got, oh, here we go. Okay, so now we're officially attaching this to the wall of the, of the rocket ship. So now we don't have, whoa, it's such a cool connection point. So, oh, dang it. Of course I'm breaking it off now. Sorry, I'm not supposed to be attaching this while it's lying down. I'm doing this for your viewing pleasure, if that makes sense. Um, so you can kind of see how the attachment points are. But normally I'd be standing this rocket up. Uh, it just makes more sense to attach the rocket on this way. And we should be. What about the people? Uh, it's not, oh, Cape Canaveral, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, you guys are talking about more NASA launching trivia? More facts? Okay, cool. So this is all attached on, and now there's these little spaces in between some of these attachment points because these two plates had to attach on properly. So let me get everything else. Ah! Sorry. Some of these parts of the, of the rocket are a little bit delicate until proven not delicate, if that makes sense. So these, these parts had to be loose before in order to make sure that everything attached. And now it's time to reinforce. This is kind of cool though. Porsche all the way. You guys like the Porsche? You talking about the Speed Champions? Or are you talking about the Technic Porsche? That Technic Porsche was quite, that was probably one of the more difficult things I've ever built. Let's see if I can get this up. All right, I made a smaller version of this set. It's completely custom and finished before the actual set was released. Yeah, you should send us send us the picture for for fan box. I want to see what it looks like. Is okay. Here we go. So that's all attached. All right, finally we're gonna get okay. So these pieces keep wanting to split apart from each other because there's still just the tiniest amount of plate tension, but we're about to change all of that. Everything is going to change in just a second with these pieces. So, realistically, once again, I shouldn't be building this um, in the order that I, that I currently am because it looks a little bit funky, but I don't know if my camera angle will be conducive to... Uh, getting this thing to actually work properly. So I'm gonna see if I can't get this thing to attach um, in just the right way. Okay, so this wants to attach here. Okay. Woo. Okay, oh. That wants to be in there. Oh, here we go. All right. Wow, there was like so many different loose parts that all wanna jump away in different directions. I'll have to be kind of pushed together all at the right exact moment. Okay, let's get that back on. Okay, let's get the second half on. Oh, gosh. Every stud has to fit in this straight. Okay, whoop! Nice, okay. So that's gonna stay on nice and tight now, and now we shouldn't have these pieces jumping away. This feels a lot more solid now. All right. Okay. Oh, and then now we're building out the top just a little bit more. Where is this going? Okay, so we have black piece here and then the white on the other side. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So much of this set is so easy to build because it's just like, do this, now repeat it. Do this, now repeat it. Do this, now repeat it. All the way through. Which is, you know, it's kind of like, it's nice, but it's also for, for somebody who who's going to be building this for a super long period of time there there is going to be a little bit of monotony to some of it if uh, if you're not careful oh oops <laughs> i accidentally added two white pieces onto that side mistake let's get this black piece here okay boom all right so that's good tell not is probably one of my favorites what is the favorite lego star wars quote favorite lego star wars quote don't tell me the odds i like that one a lot or laugh it up, furball or fuzzball. Oh, that can't be my favorite one because I don't know the exact words. But um, yeah, 
most of my favorite quotes from from Star Wars are all uh, they're all what you call it. They're all Han Solo quotes because Han Solo has the best quotes. Slash Harrison Ford in general pretty much always had the best movie lines. Um, yeah. Laugh it up, Buzzball. You know, it's interesting. You, ever, you never hear Chewie laugh any other point. Never thought about that until just now. But that is the only time you ever hear Chewie laugh. It's like when, uh... It's like when Leia kisses Luke in front of Han to sort of, like, spite Han. Um, and then, like... Yeah, and then, what's his name? Chewie, Chewie kind of, like, laughs at him for it. But he never laughs in any other context. I didn't think about that. Sorry, I'm just having sort of an epiphanal moment. Like, huh, I wonder why, that, why that's the case. All right. So, what, we've been building for one hour. There was a little bit of an intro. I went through the intro of this relatively quick. And I'm just starting bag four, so I'm at least one quarter of the way there. Um, so what? This might end up being like a four hour live stream. Which for a 2,000 part set, not too bad. How many live streams have you done, says Will McCoy. Good question. Uh, Brick Vault Channel has done live streaming, I would say for the majority of the weekdays in the past, for the, for the past, like, three or four months. So, I'm just gonna do what? That's basically maybe 20 days in, a, in the month. Uh, for the past three or four months. I'm gonna say three and a half months. So, maybe 70 live streams we might have done, maybe. Um, I think that's probably fair to say, but I haven't done all of them. Mike's done a ton of them. I think I may have done a few more live streams than Mike. Um, so, I don't know. I've probably done at least 30 live streams, I think. Maybe 40. Maybe 40. But I, I don't know. Something like that. I think that's a decent uh, guess. Oh, okay. I have to get this thing out of here. This is going to be... I, I, I still do want to have this set. I want to have make it so you guys can see everything I'm building. But it does become more difficult when I've got to like have this rocket laying on its side as opposed to... Uh, you know, building it, standing up, which is the way it should be. But then I get to this section. A lot of a lot of this building, though, is going to be like this. A lot of big, long panels. You know, times two, times four sort of thing. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to build two versions of this. What Lego set are you looking forward from The Last Jedi? Well, um, you know, we got to see the pictures of the three biggest ones. Which is cool. Um, I can say that some of my favorite sets from Force Awakens, the uh, you know the year before, uh, some of my favorite ones from there were some of the smaller ones. Um, it's usually like the top two biggest ones and the top two smallest ones are usually like my favorite. Um, at least that, that that was the case last time. I can say out of the three big ones that are coming, there's the there's the Star Destroyer, the Gorilla Walker and the um, bomber, the big rebel bomber. Uh, I'm looking forward to probably the bomber the least. Yeah, I can, I can safely say that I'm looking forward to the bomber the least just because it's, it's scaled in a very strange way. Like, because it's a pretty large ship. It looks kind of like a smaller, sleeker version of the Nebulon B, but still considerably larger than a fighter but they're scaling it in the same way where they're they kind of have like a single gunner turret at the bottom but it's going to be the, the the shapes just don't look quite as accurate or they don't look quite as normal or something something about the bomber doesn't sit quite right with me um and the walker somebody somebody said this i can't remember wait a second i'm building three of these i should only be building two dang it hold on wait a second Maybe I, I'm going to build these and then build another times. Nah, I got to take one of these apart. See, he distracted me. I blame that on, you know, myself because I'm an idiot. Okay. 
Um, move those parts out. Okay. Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't build a times three. Why did, why did I build that? Okay. Dumb. I'm dumb. Okay. Let's move. Let's move on. I can learn from this. Um, oh, yeah, and I need these parts to attach. Uh, but, so, no, the bomber I'm looking forward to the least out of the Last Jedi sets that we've seen. That's what I can say. Um, not that I think it looks particularly bad or anything. I just... Um, I think the, the walker looks good, uh, and I think I probably look, I'm looking forward to the Star Destroyer the most. The, uh, the, the Execute, no it's not the Executor, what do they call it? There's like a name for it. They don't call it that in the set. The set is just called the First Order Star Destroyer, um, just to kind of keep it simple. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm looking forward to that the most. These in. Uh, let's see. Uh, but you know what somebody said about the walker? I can't remember if it was in my comment section or if I was watching or reading something else. Uh, but somebody said that they looked at the walker and they said they thought that it looked okay, but like Lego had um, Skep Stab. Welcome. Thanks for seven. Um, they said that it looked like Lego had designed the walker in a way where um, where they had sort of counted on Lego redesigning it and remaking the set for like a few years down the line. So they sort of intentionally made it not look that good, which I thought was, I thought that was like super, I was like that, I hope Lego doesn't think like that. Where they're like, oh, this is going to be a set that that we think people are going to really like, and it's going to be a vehicle that people are going to really, really like. It's going to be some classic vehicle that everyone's going to want to have. So what they do is they make it sort of passable the first time around, with the specific intention of re-releasing that same set like five years later, and that and then the five year later mark, they're going to make like a better version of it. And I was like, that's so dark, but you know what, like. I don't think that's the craziest idea. Like, I don't think that's the craziest thing. Um, I would hate, like, I don't, I don't want to think that Lego would do something like that. And I, and deep down, I don't, I don't think they do. But in terms of just like what makes like the most logistical sense for like a company or a corporation, it was like, oh yeah, they could monetize like really well by just re-releasing this classic, you know, vehicle for Star Wars because you know people always like. The Star Wars vehicles, and they especially like buying like the updated, re-released versions. Um, they do really well when something goes on re-release. So they so they build the first one around, and they make it okay, and then they make the second one that comes out like years later. They make that one like a higher quality version, and people are like, oh yeah, this is way a way bigger improvement. But yeah. So anyways, that was like a really dark notion that somebody sort of commented about. And I thought that it had like enough weight to at least be d addressed. Not that I'm saying that they're intentionally doing that, but I thought it actually kind of made sense. Anyways, I don't love True Walker, but the minifigs are really nice. Oh yeah, the minifigs are dope. Um, I know people are they're loving to hate on Snoke. They think he looks bad. Uh, he doesn't look like how people expected him to look with like the sort of lighter brown. And he's got flesh tones. Instead, everybody thought his face was gonna be like white because that's sort of how he looked in the projection screen from uh, Force Awakens. So yeah, he doesn't, he's not meeting people's expectations, but then again, the, the actual detailing for the figure isn't really that, it's not good enough for me to like make a final judgment about what, what he's supposed to look like or how good or bad he looks. Um, all together, I'm, I'm looking forward to them. I think I still think the bomber set looks not too bad, even though I'm looking forward to it the least. Um, I still think it looks. I still I still want to get it. And I still want to see um, how good or bad it is, you know. Because I just need to. I just need to have it. I need to see it. The minifigs are dope. The, the minifigs are dope, Jack. 2017. Thanks for the quote. Put that on my grave. Um, <laughs> Do I say dope too often? 
I never say that when I when I do a minifig review video, I've noticed. I almost, like my, my choice of words and my language changes up a bit from, from when I'm speaking sort of normally. Um, oh, oops, I okay. should attach these together before I get them onto the edge here, it looks like. Um, yeah, but I, my choice of words has changed from, from when I am normally talking, like right now, to when you guys actually hear or see a review or something. Um, summer just started for me. Finally, I can watch these again. All right, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I wonder if more people will jump onto the live stream once summer comes here, which in part of me is thinking, oh, cool, that's awesome. But at the same time, it's like, I am always a little bit conflicted. I'm like, well, can't you guys also just like go outside and play and stuff too? Like I'm, I'm turning into one of those old people being like, you kids, you kids wasting your time on the darn computers and the screens and all that stuff. You know, I sometimes I, sometimes I, oh, wait a second. Did I just skip a whole section of this? I totally did. Whew. What am I thinking? Okay, gotta add all these plates, all these tiles, I mean. But yeah, no, if you guys if you guys have the time jumping in, always appreciate it. But remember, this last week here in San Diego, almost the entire week, I, I it might even be the whole week, I don't honestly know. But the last four days minimum, four or five days, um, it's been all gray. Like just dark gray, nothing. Not like not like you can't go outside, but it's definitely Definitely like a gray, just depressing sort of outside scene here in San Diego, which is almost never the case. I feel like this place is almost famous for, for having awesome weather most of the time. But yeah, the last couple of days have just been like nothing, nothing to write home about, that's for sure. Um, what the heck? Come on, buddy. Okay, so these things can all, see these all have posable areas. And you have to make sure that these studs all wanna match up. Come on, buddy. There we go, that's in there. see like a bulge and I know that's because oh that was such a okay you hear that that was such a satisfying snap I knew because if you look at all of these plates here they're they're all loose every single one of them is open up just a little bit and if one of them is off it doesn't want to snap in so you have to like really line all these up before you want to get them to snap on really tight fit already you have to make sure okay so it's in, you can kind of feel it get pushed in okay this one's this one's a little easier oh okay that one's much better all right Whew. hello everybody wow look at that this thing feels like a rock now by the way it feels super super solid um bam the variety channel hello welcome thanks for subbing Booyah, let's get this up. All right. Apparently Samuel L. Jackson signed up. I doubt that's the username Samuel L. Jackson uses on YouTube, but you never know. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, I'll, I'll start telling people that Samuel L. Jackson officially subscribes to my channel. We'll see how far that goes. <laughs> Brick Vault, hi, no one is on Twitch. No one's on Twitch? Ah, oh, come on. We, the thing is for Twitch, it's like, I wanna like get, oh wait, did I, I wasn't even looking. I, okay, I think that is the right place where it's at. Yeah, um, I hope more people start signing up on Twitch. I mean, Twitch is one of those things where it's like, all right, we just have it up there and hopefully the, the Twitch community uh, likes what we do and they, they wanna jump onto our stream. Um, we've obviously built our way up from Ooh, this is kind of cool. We've built our way up from, from the YouTube community 
we started streaming on YouTube first, and we started off, of course, as as a YouTube channel, and, and uh, we're streaming now. Wow, what the heck? Okay, okay, we need to add five of these. What are what are what is this part? I don't remember this. There's so many subtle details to the rocket that I'm look I'm building something up. And I'm like, what are we doing? What is this? I have to build this times two now. Let me just build up the second part of this before I forget. Um, so yeah, we started off at, you know, from YouTube, and then we just like, oh, let's start doing stuff on Twitch. So yeah, I have a feeling, yeah, the initial Twitch streaming community will sort of, uh, they'll sort of, it'll, it'll be slow, slow going, but I hope you guys, if, you know, if you're on Twitch and you like to Twitch around, you like to do stuff on Twitch, yeah, definitely tune in. Or just jump on YouTube. Whatever works for you guys. I think that's probably the easiest way to go. Jack, what is your favorite Lego piece ever? My favorite Lego piece? Single favorite piece of Lego ever invented by Lego. I would say it's got to be the 2x4, man. Um, I'm building something that is so... It's going to look so epic. Um... Uh, like, it is so epic. One, two, three, four, five, five. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I would say the the two by four is probably the best. Cause, cause I mean, if you look at any like super epic, large Lego build, you know, the life-size car or, you know, some massive dragon, it's pretty much all built out of two by fours. So if you were to, if, if Lego was to lose all their parts somehow. If I don't, you know, just something supernatural happened. All of a sudden, there's only one Lego piece left. That I mean, that's like without a shadow of a doubt. It's got to be. It's got to be the two by four. That's that's the favorite one. How long has Mike been with Brick Vault? I think like six months. Why is everything posted three times? Is something posted three times? Oh wow! Yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, the YouTube the YouTube chat stream thing on the on the video looks like every time you post something, it shows up three times. That is a glitch, bro. Um, and of course, because everything is live, um, glitches glitches happen real time and stay real time. I swear, it's something new every day when we stream. But um, so yes, I see. I see. Um, you only see it one time. That one furry says they only see it one time. I can see it up on my screen and it looks like it shows up three times. So I see what you guys are saying. Uh, I don't know how that is happening or why that is happening or why apparently somebody isn't seeing it. Um, I will look into it. If somebody else is seeing it and I'm seeing it, there's a good chance other people are too. So I'm gonna look into that. Hey Jack, what do you think about the new LEGO Technics as for summer 2017? Uh, I haven't honestly looked into it. Oh wait, yeah, no, I have. Um, I'm trying to think. There was one or two that really stood out to me, uh, but none of them really, none of them really grabbed my attention that much. I gotta be perfectly honest with you. Um, there's a handful of Technic sets that I really like, but the general releases from Technic, I don't, I don't keep up with quite as much. I mean. That's probably a question that's really good for um, Sario. He's, he's like Technic God. Did you see my mock of the Mario Mushroom? E yes, maybe. I can't remember, sorry, maybe. Um, I, I look, what's funny is um, Mike and I will, will see uh, like the, the fan mock builds because uh, we each switch off that episode. And so, we know exactly what every build is that came out for the episodes that we edited because we had to, you know, download the image, resize it, uh, make sure to import it properly if, you know, if there was mistakes or something. So we, we, we know exactly every single mock that we personally have had, like, edited through. Um, but then, like, I'll watch Mike's edit and I'll see all of his, all of the fan mocks just fly by. Um, and I'll see everything like once or maybe twice, but only for like a second. Um, and then I, and then I won't see it again after that. Um, 
Because remember, we get like 30 or 40 things submitted like every single time. So, you know, things come through like really fast. So I can, I'm, I, I apologize to say I do not personally remember the mushroom. Um, but I shall have my eye open for it. Um, oh, nice. This is kind of cool. Look at this. Look at this. I like this detailing. It comes all the way through. Isn't that cool? Sorry if it's a little overexposed. If I pull it back a little bit, you can see it better. So it goes all the way through. Oh, this is going to be so awesome. Okay. Where is the Stormtrooper helmet stream gone to? I have not uploaded it. And if you guys have noticed, um, we haven't been uploading as many of the live streams uh, because we. what I kind of want to do for, for, I don't know, we, we will be up starting, uploading, um, still uploading live streams, but just not all of them. What I want to do is not have all of them turn into regular videos. And that way it might give people sort of like incentive to be like, oh, like if I want to see anything about a live stream, like I have to see it live. And I've noticed that people will click onto our live stream video thinking or hoping that it's going to be just a regular set review. And then they're like, oh, wait, it's a live stream, not a set review, let's pay attention. Um, and, then I, and then I think, and then they go, okay, well, you know, I just don't want to discourage people from actually clicking on set review videos uh, thinking or expecting that and then seeing that it's a live stream because it is different types of audiences looking for certain types of stuff like you can't you can't blame anybody for not wanting to, to click on to a live stream video that isn't a live stream because I feel like so much of the appeal is like the fact that it is indeed live you know what I mean so um, like I can understand people not being oh my gosh can I just do this I might have done a thing that I shouldn't have done. There, yeah, I did. I think what I can do, actually, is... Uh, that is so annoying. Are you kidding me? Alright. I just built it wrong. You know how it is. Okay. That was the thing when I was putting it in there. I couldn't see. Okay. No, I just probably wasn't paying close enough. Guarantee you. Um, Alright, so let's start taking some of these pieces out because I'm dumb. Hopefully, I can just. Oh, dang it, that doesn't really. I think I can just move this part around. Yeah, I don't have to take everything out. I just have to move some of this stuff out. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can do this. JK, LOL. All right, so just had to get, ooh, I can, I can attach the bricks with using the brick separator, which is kind of funny. So I just need to switch out these plate pieces. I thought I was gonna have to take a lot more out, but I don't think, don't think I gotta. All right, that actually wasn't huge. Oh yeah, oh, there's this weird glitch, Mike, uh, with the, like every everybody's post is appearing like three times. You see what you see that? <laughs> yeah. So and some people are saying that they're not seeing it. I think if I'm seeing it, they're probably oh, most. Oh, because we have the chat open three times. Oh. Because we opened the chat. Open oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's posting from every single window of chat. I was looking at it. I was like, why is this happening? Okay. <laughs> So now we know. All right, hopefully chat that just opened like the chat up like a few times. You know what it was is that we haven't turned the computer yeah, off in a while, we, so maybe I close it the and then I. Yesterday, so we opened it and then we opened it up. Yep. Open. Okay. The top part of the pipe is upside down. Yeah, the top part curious. of the pipe is upside down. Yeah, you're right. I see it. This part should be facing the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's fix it. It triggers me. Oh, my OCD so much. Good. They're getting triggered. All right, yes, you got it. Don't trigger. All right, yeah. This is correct. Oops. Dang it. Oh yeah, perfect. You finished the uh, yeah. the quad. 
I, I like the ship. I can understand people being like... Okay, so that's... Did I... Oh, this one's upside down too. Wow. Guys, this is, this is what happens. I blame you guys for distracting me with, the, with your questions in the chat. All of my mistakes. See? Aren't I, aren't I a mature adult? adult? I just... I'm like, ah! I made a mistake! It must be your fault. <laughs> This off the brick separator. I like that you can use the brick separator to to transfer parts onto pieces too. Okay. So that should attach here. There we go, guys. One of these days, this thing is gonna get good. Oh. It doesn't want to snap into place. Oh, there we go. Okay. And this is also gonna attach here, like that. Perfect. Okay. And then, all right, that fix didn't take too much extra time. Thank you for pointing out the mistakes. This is why we guys have you on the chat in the first place. Um, you're actually our, our last line of defense, so we don't mess up too much. Okay. So let's actually put this down now. And where are these tile pieces going to go? Oh, I see. Okay, let's get this on. that over. Hello. Welcome. You guys are following up on Twitch. You guys are following up on YouTube. Loving, loving the support, guys. I feel like, I feel like even, especially in the more recent days, we've been getting a lot more people just jumping on um, and supporting us and just like either subscribing or donating or whatever you guys do. Um, I feel like we've just been, it's been happening a little bit more often in the last like few days. Maybe that's because there's so many new sets coming out. Uh, but either way, I think it's pretty awesome. Mike and I are just jumping through. Whew. And Mike and I might switch off at one point during this build just because it is a massive build. Um, and Mike wants to build, you wanna build some of this? Mike says he might wanna build some of it. It's going pretty quick. I mean, I'm finishing up. I'm almost done with bag four, which is like one third of the way. Not bad. Okay. Okay. Wait a second. Still gotta get that part on. Brick Vault, what's your favorite old Lego set? Uh, favorite old Lego set? Um, it might be some of those old classic pirate ship sets, because when I was younger, that was in my mind, like the most epic Lego sets ever. Like it could not get cooler than a pirate ship. Just couldn't. Um, I even liked it more than some of the other stuff. Hello there. Hey everybody. Got some more people jumping in on Twitch. Loving that. This is our, some people were saying that there isn't like a lot of action going on in the Twitch, in the Twitch areas, but we're confident we'll just keep streaming on Twitch. We'll keep streaming. We're thinking about maybe streaming onto Facebook also. I don't know. Once you start streaming onto platforms, it's like there's kind of no point in not doing it on as many platforms as possible. Um, and Facebook is, Facebook Live is like a sort of a new thing. I'm kind of curious to see if people are even using it. You know what I mean? Because I have seen like links to it before. People are like, so-and-so is streaming on Facebook. Um, these mods are robots. I knew it! Just the way they talk and type. Are you talking about Nightbot? Because Nightbot's definitely a robot. His name is Bot. <laughs> um, but he's the only bot. I think, unless unless maybe our mods are robots and we just didn't know it the whole time, Mike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're attaching this. That's, that's why they don't want Nightbot. Yeah, that's why they don't want that's Nightbot. Like... They're competing with their, with their bot bodiness that's the craziest thing ever okay and sweet getting another sub from twitch thanks for subbing good I'm curious it's almost it almost feels like we're having more sub twitches this this stream than other well maybe not quite as much but 
403. Oh, man. All right. Got people jumping in, jumping in. Uh, Jack, do you remember the blue Lego pirate set with the three-part hull? Yes, I do. Uh, I love I love those old pirate sets. We have, we have one. Actually, when I find the time, you know, there's a million set and episode ideas that Mike and I, we, we probably, I had, I remember we wrote down a list like a while ago about a bunch of sets that we really wanted to get through. And then we've done a bunch of them, but just the, the, the adding on to that list has just gotten so much bigger. But one of the set lists that we want to, one of, one of the set episodes that's on the list that we want to do is the, um, is the, whatchamacallit, the revamping and sort of renovating of, these are the spares, uh, of the pirate ship that we have in the studio. There's one or two broken pieces, and then the, everything else is super dusty and yellow. 1969! Yes, that's right, Sarah Lucas. The parts for this set are the same year that the rocket launched. It is absolutely insane. Oh my god. Okay. Um, and we're building a times four thing. It looks like bag number five is just a panel thing. Jack, do you think uh, Lego is going to make any Indiana Jones five sets? Maybe. I'm not too excited about it. I really wasn't a fan of the fourth one. So, you know, if they do, the only positive I can really hope to, for me personally, to get out of it is like, hopefully if they, if they do another Indiana Jones set of releases, that we also get some more classic Indiana Jones sets coming out of that. Does that make sense? So they released a bunch of the classic sets along with some Crystal Skull sets for when they did Indiana Jones last time. Um, so maybe it's like, ooh, they're gonna do an Indiana Jones theme and they'll release three or four sets for the, for the movie. One or two of them might be for the new Indiana Jones movie, whatever the heck they're gonna call it. And then maybe we'll get like the snake pit from Raiders of the Lost Ark or we'll, like with the city or something like the little city i think that would be a fun set or uh we could get oh, there'd be so many cool ones i don't know like the temple of doom the feast when they're at the palace and they're eating like the eyeball soup and stuff i don't know maybe that wouldn't be a good lego set maybe that wouldn't like translate well to a lego set but i think that would be really awesome um Whoa, what the heck are you guys doing on the stream? Hold on, let me do one thing here. Okay, here we go. Just doing something, okay, sweet. Jack and Morty. Is Are you equating me to Rick from Rick and Morty? Because I'll take that as a compliment, sir. I'm inclined to take that as a compliment. Also, this 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 massive uh, stormtrooper helmet that I'm building, I already have I already have a Rick and Morty reference for for another episode to use that. You'll see. Cap or Iron Man? Favorite Star? Okay, what do I think is better, Captain Man or uh, Captain America or Iron Man? Um, growing up, didn't really care for either of them as superheroes. Like I, I like I knew they were around, but I just didn't really care. Um. But now from the cinematic universe, I like Iron Man way more. He's just like a funnier character. Um, the one thing I don't like is that they made him sort of like on the on the wrong side of history in terms of uh, the Civil War movie. Because Captain America is totally in the right in that movie. He's like the actual good guy and Iron Man is like the bad guy. Um, but I still like Iron Man more. He's better. Uh, are there going to be smaller, cheapo Lego Last Jedi sets coming out, Jack? Sort of. Uh, yeah, because the big ones are all really expensive, but the, the cheapest one is 40 bucks, and, like, the next cheapest one is 60 Uh, and then they're all more expensive, you know. So, yeah, there are going to be cheaper ones other than, you know, outside of, like, the 110 130 and 150 dollar range, but it goes, like, 40 60 and then I think there's, like, one or two 70 or 80 90 sets. Um... So they're pretty much all gonna be pricey. 
That's that's the general consensus is Last Jedi sets are going to be pricey sets. No no way around that. Jack, why do you love Rick and Morty so much? Cuz it's just such an awesome show, man. It's like it's just got such like a great sort of combination of uh, ridiculous humor that's kind of it's kind of random, it's kind of it, it's kind of gritty and stuff, but also really, really clever. Like the actual story arc and the structure of the characters is uh, is clever, and it, and it also has those those few episodes that really hits you in the feels. You know, it's just got it's it's just it's just got everything, man. I just love Rick and Morty. But what the heck? Season three, episode one came out forever ago. It came out like two months ago. What? April first. It came out on April first, and now it's June. June 1st. What? So yeah, what the heck? I mean, I understand that they're like, taking forever, but are you kidding me? Come on, guys. That, that's one thing that I'm, I'm hoping that like, they can really streamline and actually go just full heads, heads into it. Like the creators can really like, spend, like I don't know why the production's taking so long. Um, it makes me a little bit nervous. Like, I hope that they don't just like burn out and just like do a couple of seasons and be like, oh, we're done. Because A, I'm gonna want more, but B, they're just gonna spawn like this, you know, how like Firefly died too early and people just have been talking about Firefly forever. I don't want that to be Rick and Morty. I'd rather have them like do it until, until the creators like kind of lose their enthusiasm for it and like maybe the show starts to fall off a little bit. And then at least you can be happy in the fact that like it hit its full potential as opposed to um, a show where it's like in its prime and everybody really likes it and the content that's coming out is really good and then it just stops happening. You know what I mean? I would way prefer a show to actually burn out and people would be like, oh, it's not good anymore. I don't want it as, as opposed to um, as opposed to it being really good and then nobody wanting to see it anymore. If that makes any sense. I would totally prefer that. Okay. Okay, and I think I've attached this to the right spot. Their paneling is a little bit weird. They haven't, they're not very specific on where they want this to end up. Okay. The times four. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna mess around with this and see what happens. So, we have another four of these that we're doing the panels for. Might have to play around. Hi, Jack, says Carson Pepin. Hello, Carson. Hey, Brick Vault, my dad works at NASA, and I love Lego. That's why I want the Saturn V. Heck yeah, dude. My dad works. Yeah, I know, right? Like, dad works at NASA. That's like the coolest thing ever. Really? <laughs> that's kind of a cool story in and of itself. Oh, you might have mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah, well, that's a cool story. Don't argue with ever. That's a cool story in and of itself, though. It's like, oh, yeah, I was working for SpaceX. Yeah. Got into an argument with Elon Musk and no longer works at SpaceX. <laughs> That's what he says. Like an MIT engineer. <laughs> uh, I'm going. Oh, out of all the 2018 DC sets, what is the most promising? Uh, have we seen pictures for the new 2018 DC sets? Uh, yeah. uh, what are they? Oh wait, yes, I have. That was just the article that came out like yeah, 
today or yesterday. Um, oh yeah, oh so yeah, just like the theme behind it. As long as they're doing new stuff, dude, I'm down. As long as they're introducing new characters, I'm... Oh yeah, the, the official pictures for it. Um, Alright, just get all these chunks put together. Jack, are you planning on buying and playing Star Wars Battlefront 2? Um, I don't know. If it's good, yeah, maybe. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like Battlefront 1 kind of fizzled out pretty quickly, didn't it? In terms of, like, people being super into it. It was, like, the biggest thing ever for, for like, a month or two. And then they just didn't have enough stuff to, uh, to kind of keep the audience like involved or like really caring that was that was what i heard i heard that they kind of released a semi-incomplete platform yeah i don't know no i don't know if i'm gonna play it i might i might mess around with it my brother's got so many games that like if i'm at his place i'll be like oh maybe i'll jump onto this game and play it for like a little bit but never like play it play it you know like i played both Right, that was the thing. It's like the most. That's what I've heard. I heard it's like the most beautiful game ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what I. Yeah. Because I played, I played, yeah, the first one. Yeah, no, I, because I played, I played it for like, uh, probably like 45 minutes at my brother's place. I was just like, that was pretty fun. I like that. But that, but like, I didn't really, it didn't really go beyond that. And so, yeah, I can understand. Like, it's, I feel like games right now are meant to be like impressive enough to like, You'll love playing them for like just a. S yeah. Yeah. No, I can see that. All right, so we just attached all of these. No progress. I like the premise, at least, of Battlefront 2. It looks cool with like the special ops guys and like the Death Star blows up and they're on like this big revenge mission. Like, the actual premise of the game, like, I feel like that is just, like, a campaign first-person shooter could be really compelling. Like, the story behind it, at least. Um, but I don't know. Can't tell you, man. Mr. Meeseeks looks at me. What? Hi, Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Oh, man. I want to... I want them to make... So I saw somebody make, like, a Mr. Meeseeks minifigure out of Lego. But they kind of use like clay for the head and it didn't look like super awesome. I would love, Lego has the perfect mold, like the gingerbread man mold for the head. That's the perfect Mr. Meeseeks head mold. I'm like, Lego, just please make that in blue for some reason so we can make a Mr. Meeseeks fig. It'd be the greatest thing ever. I'd love to get a Meeseeks fig. I was actually working on a Meeseeks box um, in Lego. I have one of the walls completed, but the colors are all off. And I was looking, I was looking at um, kind of how to get those pieces in in, in the right format for, for from Bricklink. But the problem is Bricklink or Lego hasn't created the right parts in the right color. So I might do a Meeseeks box that's smaller than you know what a real Meeseeks box should be, um, but do it sort of. Like, uh, but just do it in the proper color format. Because the, the colors for a Meeseeks box are actually kind of subtle, and they don't really exist in the, in the same way that they would normally for a Lego set. Ooh, cool. All right, and then this is the last, yeah. Okay. So we've, we've done all of it, except for these two little chunks. See that one and that one? Okay, that's what we're building right now. Easy peasy, and then bag number five's done. We're almost halfway. What? And we're under two hours? What? And I messed up pretty bad. What? Okay. Uh, hey, Jack, what is your favorite Lego technique? Not technic, but technique. 
Good question. Um, let's see. I'm always a fan of how people create cylinders in Lego. Um, I, I've been playing around with this technique recently, trying to create a plumbus. <laughs> and I found, cause like the plumbus has to also be able to fit into, um, it's gotta be able to fit uh, into a, another, another circle and attach on just perfectly. So I've been playing around with some different cylinder techniques and I like the way that they made the barrel on top of the firehouse for the modular set. And then um, there's just different ways. I like the way people make cylinders with, with like clips or like the cylinders of tree trunks with the ax blade and droid arms. So recently that's been stuff I've been sort of just looking at and just being like, how'd they do this? How'd they do that? How'd they do this? How'd they do that? You know? So I don't know if that's a specific, it's not a specific technique, but that's just what I've been sort of interested in recently. Hello, hello, hello. People are just saying hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. If you're just jumping on in, I suppose this is the time to do a quick revamp. This is the NASA Apollo Saturn V Lego Ideas set 21309. It has 19, 169 pieces the exact same year that this rocket launched and landed people on the moon. Um, the set sells for $120 or 110 pounds or 120 euro, which makes it one of the best part to price ratio sets, not just for the year, but probably one of the best part to price ratio sets um, out of any Lego set, period. Like this might actually be one of the best priced sets uh, out there right now. I mean, granted, you know, with, with a set like this, uh, when you have a lot of sort of homogenous parts, similar to like the Big Ben set, which was also a wonderfully priced set, um, you are, yeah, there, you know, cause so much of this is like just so many smooth white, you know, slope pieces and stuff uh, that you are just gonna be getting certain types of certain types of parts for much cheaper when they're all kind of the same. So it's expected for this price to be good because you're not gonna be getting a huge diversity. Either way though, either way, there's there's no two ways of putting around just like a really, really well-priced set. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy that, uh, that we're not only getting a super high quality set, but it is coming out at a sort of wonderful, uh, affordable for its size. It's one of the tallest sets ever made and it's coming in at 120 bucks. Um, ooh, this is good. This is really actually right here what I'm doing, uh, attaching these these Technic pieces together through the cross areas. They, uh, this really kind of solidifies these bottom panels. Cause this thing, like it, you can pull this off. Like see how that just like I pulled that off. But once I slap this area in, it attaches into this cross piece and that pin goes in there and you can't pull it out anymore. It is like, I can really pull on it and it's not gonna go anywhere. So we are, we're solidifying the bottom panels and the bottom plates and we're building something that I think you guys are gonna find pretty darn familiar. If I can find the right pieces for it, that is. There we go. Okay. This is the beginning, the beginning of the end. Ooh, yeah, I don't wanna forget the other dark cylinder piece. Where are you? Oh, show yourself. Yes, that's a, a good Lego building technique is if you can't find the part you're looking for, just yell at it really loud and it'll appear. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called science, guys. If you just yell at your Lego pieces loud enough, you'll be able to find them. Um, hey, you did a good job, McLean Toys, no pig, can't fly, what are you talking about? I love your channel, thank you, Brick Bros. Is that, oh, Brick, Brick Bros Legos. So it's not Brick Bros UK. Yeah. So yeah, I looked at it for a second, I was like, is that Brick Bros UK? Oh no, it's not Brick Bros UK, okay. Thank you. I, I do one heck of a Brick Bros UK impression. One heck of one. I think you know it'd be a funny collaborative project for like a bunch of Lego YouTubers to do, because we almost exactly, exactly. It'd be oh, I sound like Kermit. 
Yeah. Hurt? Yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah, that's bad. If I try to do a Kermit impression, I sound like Yoda. Yeah, you've been all about that. I, I heard it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I listened to it. It didn't think it was that fun. <laughs> Uh, it's just some things, some things I'll never get. It, you know what, I liked it when it was first a channel, and then, I don't know why, but like, it just kind of, it just kind of died on me. Like, I don't know, just couldn't, just couldn't get into it for forever. I was just like, oh, it's okay, but I stopped. Like, I, I discovered the Bad Lip Sync channel at around the same time as the, uh, as the, whatchamacallit, the, um, I discovered it around the same time as Honest Trailers, and I, and I pretty much watch every single Honest Trailers episode, but I sort of just stopped watching Bad Lip Sync. I thought the humor sort of remained the same. I think the one that really, really got me was the Game of Thrones, um, theme, like the, medieval medieval times theme park that was that was like i thought their best one but it's been a while Bam. brick vault a spacex rocket is going to launch oh yeah i saw that it's gonna launch dude it's gonna launch during this stream i think i think the spacex rocket is gonna launch during this stream yeah wait a second i mean don't that's not gonna happen don't don't leave this stream and watch an actual rocket ship launch into space during this live stream, don't do that. I was just kidding, guys. I'm a liar. I'm lying. I'm just kidding. There's definitely not going to be a SpaceX rocket launch in like an hour or something. I don't know if it's an hour. Um, yeah, yeah, that was it was kind of cool. Like there's this post on Reddit, and it was like by the time this post hits 12 hours old, like a SpaceX rocket will like launch into the atmosphere and then like come back down or something. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like the old days. Okay, seven one three seven is okay. What are you talking about? Muy bueno. Muy bueno. So it looks like okay, this is such a okay. Okay, and it wants to be on the inside of this. Okay. Oh, this is the where the fuel goes towards the rocket or something. This is where where they inj don't they like inject like oxygen or something like right to the opening of these. Like the rocket? Okay. Okay, yeah, so if that's there, and this one comes through, I'm sorry if this if this is getting a little bit weird, but I have to make sure that I'm doing this symmetrically. So it like looks kinda how it should. Yeah, so that should be on this side. Oh, this is kinda cool. So this is yeah, this is like the fuel injecting hose. I'm almost positive of that. I can't remember how I how I knew this or like I, I can't remember if they're injecting direct rocket fuel towards like the mouth or if they're adding like another chemical to kind of like make the reaction happen more efficiently or something. I, I do I do remember this though, like learning about this in science class somewhere. Um, okay. So there we go. Okay. 
So I don't know if you can tell that, but this is the bottom of the rocket here. And there's these hoses that kind of, they, they each stick right towards, right towards the bottom. And this is, I think the fuel line that is, uh, there's fuel of course on the inside of the rocket, of, of the rocket tubes, but there's like another chemical. There's like, I can't remember if there's another something, but that's what helps them like shoot out a lot faster or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure there's somebody else that might know a lot more about this than I do. But I remember seeing that. I was like, ah, oh, this looks like something. This looks so familiar. How do I know about this? I'm not like a rocket person or a rocket expert by any means, but pretty sure that's true. Okay. And this is the last of it. Sorry. I'll build that on. I'll build that next one on camera. There's one, two. Very simple. Get the white in there. And when you cover it with the orange, it really makes the orange pop up a bit brighter. You, know, you don't need to have the inside of this orange because it would actually look darker. Um, you don't want that necessarily. They did make an avatar set. Last airbender. Oh. <laughs> um, six bags, six or seven bags left. Let's see. This is bag number six I'm working on. So, um, let's see. How many is that? Um, so yeah, so this is when I'm done with these rockets and stuff, this will be technically the halfway point. Some bags are much smaller than others though. So the numbers don't necessarily mean you're halfway. They just, they're a pretty good indicator. Yep, this set just became available today. That is, this is true. This set, Mike- get it fast, you're selling like crazy. Yeah, Mike, you think it's sold out from your, from the uh, Lego store in San Diego? Yeah, when yeah, I came, I bet they it sold is. like 30 or something. Yeah. And it was what? It was I only like... One of the like, last few. Yeah, you, you were there like before 11. There was like, uh, a couple with like two in the hand. Ooh, snap. So right after me, I saw like a few people buying the, the last of it. Dang, yeah. So they might not be getting shipment until I don't know when. Dang, but yeah. It, yeah, there was like a huge shipment of this one. And probably it's done by now. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd be willing to bet on that. Boom! So there we go. Rockets are done. All right, that is a good looking, that is a good looking rocket ship if I don't say so myself. I think we're gonna clean up this bottom area. That's probably gonna what, be what finishes off um, this bag here. If I don't I can guess myself, but let's find out. So yeah, so much of this set I like you, thank you. Assuming, of course, you're talking to me. Brick Bros UK, hello, it's Brick Bros UK, and we're here with another Lego review. <laughs> hello, it's Brick Bros UK, and we're here with another Lego review. Yeah, that's funny. It'd be funny if that was actually, you're from Brick Bros UK. I think that would be a really funny collaborative video, though, if like, if, if like, a Lego YouTuber and another Lego YouTuber just like tried to do a YouTube video, like a regular Lego video, but like in their style. So like doing an impression of the other person. I mean, you know, you like obviously like poke fun at them a little bit. And I think that'd be kind of funny. It'd be a little bit too self-referential perhaps for like the average audience member, but it could be fun to do. There we go. Okay. How the heck? Oh, I see. So it wants to attach to all the white parts on this side. I see. Oh, this makes sense. Ooh. <laughs> the ratcheted part just didn't want to snap in there and the whole thing shot out. Let's see if I can. Okay. I do that a bunch of times over. He's like, there's a stud in the way that kind of makes this ratcheted piece a little bit harder to pop in every time. So you really have to kind of force it in there just a little bit extra. But if you don't have it in the right spot, the whole thing's gonna wanna just jump right out. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm gonna repeat this step again, but with the opposite build on, yep, okay. That's exactly what I thought. Let's do that again, but just the ratcheted pieces are now gonna be facing the other direction. Do this four times. Okay. 
the store build blocks. Can you show what the full ship looks like? I shall. When I finish bag six, I'll give you guys, uh, I'll give you guys, I'll let you see what the rocket looks like in its entirety. Um, I'm almost done with bag six. Maybe a few more minutes. Uh, we should be able to see what this rocket is starting to look like. I'm, this is the main chunk of the, oh my gosh. It's so big already and it's like, we haven't even built like the second half of it. It's gonna be a meter high. Hey, can you make a Lego machines? You mean just like a like a actual machine? Yes, actually, we are planning on building like a cool kind of weird, crazy Lego machine in the next month or two. Um, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but that is in that's in the pipeline. That's that's what we're planning for. Will you get the Lego Avatar set ever? Um, I think he means like Last Airbender. I think there was for like that M. Night Shyamalan movie <laughs> that nobody liked. Lego, it's funny because Lego in the past has definitely backed the wrong horse in terms of like really cool movies. They get like a license deal with like, like who even remembers the Lone Ranger? It was like such a huge flop. But like, there's a bunch of Lego sets based on the Lone Ranger. All right, and now it wants. Let me just see. Oh, so cool. Okay, I want to. So this is how it wants you to attach all these parts at the bottom. But check this out. So you're looking at it, right? Okay. Now this is awesome. Watch this. So you just ratchet it down on either side. Eh, isn't that cool? And it should just match up all the way around. So simple, and it's so satisfying. Now, you know, you have to play around with them so they kind of match up perfectly. But then I think, yeah, now we're building out the uh, sort of rest of this detailing out here. A lot of times for stuff, so I always kind of push this out of the way and I'm gonna be building each little smaller chunk so we, so we know what we're doing. Um, that's cool though, I like the way this, thing, this thing's turning out. I thought this was gonna have some really, really like sort of difficult things to put together. There's been a little bit of sort of clever detailing and I think that's why they, they moved the, the building age up to 14 up as opposed to maybe 12 and up. I um, mean, maybe the fact that this is like a super big set, like it's really, really large, but I don't think it's actually difficult to put together. And I'm so grateful that it's put into 12 bags. That does make your life so much easier when you're, when you're building. You can kind of turn your brain off a little bit more when you're when you're not having to organize as many pieces, or conversely, uh, just search through larger piles of Lego. You can kind of just see exactly what you need, grab it, put it on, and you don't have to think another thing about it. You've probably been noticing the way I do that. Like, I'm not really doing the classic, like, oh, where's that piece? Oh, where's that part? Where's that? You know. Because every bag is just a you know a handful of extra parts every time, so I pretty much can just grab the parts as fast as I can find them, which is almost immediate. All right, there is a little bit more complex stuff as you as you put these pieces in here. So cover that up and go around like this, and just like this. Hey, Brick Vault, where are you guys from? Um, I'm from California, and we operate from San Diego. Uh, Mike is from Poland. You might have been able to tell based on his on his accent. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty much. Oh, okay. It wants me to add these fins on here, and now it's like I don't think I can. Uh, I don't think I can get away with keeping this this rocket on its side for much longer, or for any time at all, really. Okay, so before I put these fins on, I'm gonna add actually one more, one more piece. Got these regular, just gray two by fours. Wants me to add some slope pieces here. I'm gonna. This is out of order. I should be doing this second, but I'm doing it now because I think I'm gonna have to have this rocket standing up from now on with the with the side fins at the bottom. Thank you for responding. Your channel's incredible. You are welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm from Scotland. 
I'm not, I'm reading comments. I'm not from Scotland. Um, there we go. And boom. Boom. Should be one more. Oh, okay. It's hiding. It's hiding under the manual. So simple. So simple. Look at look at how simple that is. Look at this. Push it in right there. No, no finagling. No difficult little pieces in there. So this thing is all built out. Let me stand it up because it pretty much has to be. And this is it. This is just the last of the last of the detailing for bag number six, which means. We are just finishing this. Oh, we got a subscriber. Thank you. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks for subscribing up. Boom. <whistles> let me, let me, sorry, stand up and zoom out. So this is, okay, see this is the rocket here. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let me switch to this camera also so you can see. This is it up to my chest, so you have an idea just how big this thing is. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> this is it standing on the table. So you can see, like, uh, so, this, when, when this is, when this is built all the way to the top, it is going to be absolutely massive. It's gonna be so huge. Um, and I don't think we're messing around with this rocket anymore. So, this part, we're done with this. This is done. It's gonna be off to the side. Um, and now we're building the next chunk, the next big chunk. So, bag seven, boom. You're officially halfway there. Okay. You are cool. I am from Arizona. Harry Potter and some Lord of the Robots sets, please. Oh, you guys want some throwbacks. I see what you're saying. You might be able to do some throwback sets. Always played around with that idea. And I always do this, but let me move these parts a little bit off to the side. Oh, yeah. Let me move all these curved pieces. They were blocking and hiding a lot of the parts uh, the last time I did this. This looks like almost the exact same build format as the last one. I'm going to zoom in. Shwee! So you can see a little bit better. And let's open up some of these smaller ones. What's the price of this set? This set is priced at $120 or 120 euro or 110 pounds. And it is almost 2,000 pieces, 1969. So that is um, one of the best part to price ratios of the year. Maybe it is the best part to price ratio of the year. I don't know if that's a fact, but it feels like it could be. Because, um, dude, somebody could have like, they could have priced this set, I'm not even kidding, at like $200, and I would have been like, yeah, okay, I believe LEGO trying to do that. Like, I wouldn't say it's a great deal, but it wouldn't be like unreasonable, I don't think. Um, but I think they figured, because they're using so many simple pieces, and uh, so many repetitive pieces, that they could really get the price down, just in terms of um, the pieces that are used to create the set. So. They don't mind, they don't care. They're just like, no, like this makes sense. We're just gonna part it down to a price that makes sense for our production. And so, yeah, this is a wonderfully priced set. 120 bucks for a massive set. Um, pretty nice. I think, they, I think they did the right thing here. People people like to sort of bash on Lego for, for sort of overcharging at certain points. And they do sometimes. It's not like they're, they never do it. But um, this is this is a, an example of something where they where they really I think they did they did this right in terms of uh, not taking advantage I think of the, of the customer. So nice. Um, I think so far the build has been pretty excellent. I think if you guys have been watching uh, on the live stream, you can see that the building techniques that they've employed are pretty clever, pretty simple, and. Uh, they look excellent. They look, you know, it's it's one of those sets where it feels like they, I, I don't know what else they could have really done to make it look better than what it looks like right now at the scale that it's set at. So, 
pretty much get what you want. Who's excited for Wonder Woman movie coming out? Is it coming out tomorrow? Oh, nice. I didn't, I didn't even know it was coming out tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think it. I think uh, I've got higher hopes for the Wonder Woman movie than I do for the Justice League movie. For some reason, I feel like it's just gonna. There's not gonna be as many crazy weird factors. So I don't know. It might just be a better story. I just have a feeling. Just a guess, though. No idea. Okay. Just a couple of times. Aiden Tonus, welcome. Thanks for subbing. I feel like since the movie has increased, Lego has increased. Le Lego does increase prices of movies that are like licensed sets, and. I know some people like to bash, like, oh, you know, they're, they're, if they increase the price because people are really into it and they just know that they're going to make money off of it. But remember, they also have to pay out a, a licensing fee. Like, they, you know, they paid to produce those sets from Warner Brothers or from whoever uh, is making those, those movies. So, yeah, LEGO gets to make movies based off of licensed products, but they pay for those licenses, so... Yeah, they are gonna cost more. Um, that's just that's just the way it works. Um, here we go. Oop. All right. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter which side this is on. Such a simple but easy and kind of. I like that they use this cylinder piece here. Even though it's not, it's not going to be seen or used uh, within the actual build. Everything else is external detailing on the rocket, with pretty much just curved pieces. But um, at the end of the day, this is really structurally sound and it's light, so this thing isn't going to be just like the most massive, heavy, crazy thing to, to handle or move around. So it's kind of cool that they've. Uh, use these cylinder pieces, but somehow managed to get the detailing so good that it's not even required for any of the external smooth cylinder stuff that you're going to see in the final product. It's cool. Just cool, man. Of course, I'm missing pieces. There it is. Oh. Ahsoka? Are you talking about Star Wars now? Sorry, I just, I just looked up and saw that. Here we go. Yep, looks like we're building another double double section of the ship like we did the last time around. It's identical building technique again. Lego isn't a word. I think it is a word. I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah. I think Lego's a word, right? It's gotta be a word. Ah, oh, you subscribe. Thank you, Jackson Floyd, for subscribing. Always happy to see people jumping on to the stream or jumping on, checking out stuff in the channel. Here we go. Boom. I should sell my, well, make room for the bigger set. Oh. Oh, yeah. You guys making room for the bigger version of this model. I see what you're saying. Jack, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Boom. My favorite Star Wars movie is Return of the Jedi. I know that's not a, as common a pick, but I just liked it, man. I just thought it was good. Luke coming in he's what's interesting is like his character in the beginning seems like all mysterious and like sort of like super Jedi but he kind of turns back into like throughout the movie he kind of like has the same old sort of personality in a weird way like in the beginning he feels like such a different weird and mysterious sort of guy and then as the movie progresses, he kind of feels like sort of like the same guy. And then he has, of course, the epic ending. But like, I don't know. 
I feel like he's he's gonna be even crazier and more mysterious and stuff um, in the next one because he's gonna have been like a hermit for who knows how long. Okay. What are we doing here? Okay, we're adding even more of these. So many of these parts here. These these inverted. Not inverted. Um, these modified plate pieces with studs on either side, or some are inverted, some are not. There's so many of them in this set, and that's really these parts here are really what attach and keep all of the outside paneling on. Hey, thanks for subbing, Miguel. People are jumping in. Thanks for responding. That's your favorite because of the final duel. The final duel is, is pretty much like the most epic. Yeah, it's pretty much like one of the most epic scenes within Star Wars at all. Um, I just love that line in that scene where, like, the, the Emperor is just like, Yes, I can feel your anger. And he just, like, gets all... <laughs> he gets, like... I don't know why. Like, he's just... That scene is just so funny. It, like, kind of cracks me up as opposed to... Because it feels almost like melodramatic a little bit, like the way the Emperor gets like so into it. But this is me. I was just watching it now. I remember being like really sort of scared or whatever when I was a kid. Like, oh no, he's going to get chopped up or something. But watching it now is just like, ugh. Just like such a crazy, such a crazy old guy. It's cool. Kind of like the way this is attaching on properly here. Um, this is kind of cool. Check this out. We got this up here. Soon it's going to get too tall, and I'm either going to have to uh, zoom this camera out, or I'm going to have to um, lay this thing on its side like I did for the last one. I think it worked out. I don't think it slowed me down too much to lay this build on its side. Oh, look at this. Now this is, at the top of here, I think this is where the lander is supposed to attach to. This is where the lunar lander is actually supposed to be in the rocket, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 1969 pieces. I like that people keep noticing that. I didn't know that was the case for the set until, until like, uh, I was setting this live stream up, and I was, you know, I was looking up the, the information, so you can see in the description, uh, you know, the prices and everything. And I was like, wait a second, that is 1969 pieces the exact year this thing launched I wonder if there's just gonna be like one extra piece or something they're just gonna add like you'll see at the end with your spare parts you're like wait a second why do I have like an extra whatever piece oh so it wasn't 1968 but like 1969 okay so I'm building four of these chunks let me just put that back down there Yeah, this is going to be so we attach all those fun little side panels again. Now I can kind of see what this is for, because I've already built the first half of this rocket. So now I know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Before it was just, you know, kind of random structural stuff. But now I know what's going on. Oh, what if I told you the answer to life is 42? Oh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy! Oh man, I've got all those books. I have all those books in my room. I love Hitchhiker's Guide. I think there, well, wait a second. I, I heard there was like five. I've got the first three. And I liked all of them. Um, not a bit, wasn't a big fan of the movie, but uh, really did like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So funny. That would be a great spaceship to do out of Lego. Um, I can't remember how it was portrayed, the, the, the ship was portrayed in the movie. But I loved it. Happy for... Uh, what are you guys talking about? Ah, uh, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide. That, that was a great That was a great set of books. That was so entertaining. Okay, let's see. We've got... How is this... Attaching... Oh, I see. Okay, that's... Okay, sorry. You couldn't see what I was... So this is how it's going to attach. We've got these pieces that we just chunked in here. Look how clever this is. So you see these little 
these little modified bar pieces that kind of hook up there. We've got the modified one by one and they actually just fit in right there. So that's how we get each one of these to, to fit on either side. That's so cool. I have not been playing, I have not messed around with that building technique in a um, Lego set before. I did hear that um, the the building technique in this uh, for this build for this for this set has made sort of illegal like the illegal connections legal, which basically means um, if Lego hasn't tried that connection point within an official set, the you know certain builders just say it's like an illegal technique or in a technique that. Um, that you know, some model, some some Lego builders like don't try to do. Um, there's other ones that are like legitimately illegal, which is you know like putting cheese wedge pieces in between you know bricks so they face away from each other perfectly. Um, and that's just kind of like a tension point that wasn't really specifically designed into the brick. Um, but yeah, so here's. I think I think this this connection point has probably been done in a set before, but really uncommon and so clever in the way that it's attached. It's so cool. All right, anyways, let's move on. Get this thing in here. Adding the next top to the platform. All right, do this. I like how some of the spare parts here that are used are gold as well, because they needed some of the pearl gold pieces to make uh, the lunar lander. So, because they've produced some pearl gold for the set, they've also decided to use some of them for the spare parts as well. I just thought that's kind of a nice little add-on bit. Okay, so now we've got a decent amount. This is going to be a big, massive set of connection points. Not only are there the outer studs, but there's these hidden clips under here. And maybe even somebody can attach to that bar as well, you don't really know. So there's a lot of stuff going on for this set. And, oh, we're doing it times two. Oh, this is such a complex looking thing. Okay. You are, you are gonna be, this is definitely one of the more complicated looking parts of the build right here. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be for. Are you guys talking about flat earth, really? On a, on a, is that because of the, the, the set? People saw it was like Saturn V you know, rocket that sent man to the moon. So you guys are gonna have a flat earth discussion. That doesn't make no sense. How many Lego parts can you, what are, what are you, what? I don't know how to read that. Okay, how many bags are in the set? What bag am I on? The, there are 12 bags in the set, and I believe this is bag number seven. So I'm over halfway. Um, making pretty decent time, considering uh, that it's nearly 2,000 pieces. My guesstimation was that I might be able to finish this around four hours. And if I can build a 2,000 piece set in four hours, on a live stream, no doubt, because live streams usually are slower than um, Sort of like your average, your average Lego build. Um, that's good for me. I'm I'm very content with that, and that's just a testament to the fact that uh, this Lego set is built extremely well. The building techniques are easy to follow along to. They're not a, they're not overly complex or kind of difficult. So that's good. Happy with it. Also. Also, it's 12 bags split up between 2,000 pieces, which is pretty small part count per bag, which means not that much organization is needed to uh, complete it. Um, and you're not spending that much time looking for parts, which is always gonna make your build go much, much, much faster. What the heck? Look at this. What the heck is this? This is all, this is all purely to have like the optimum connection points and they could care less about what this thing looks like. They just, you know, all these random parts, you know, some are yellow, some are red, some are green, some are blue, gray, dark gray, look at tan, all of these colors, just in these weird connection point pieces. But 
That's because, you know, this needs to attach to like four or five different areas and all these special little ways. And that's that, you know. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, these jumpers. Wow, that is something else. Okay, yeah. I think that should be it. Okay, so I just built, I think that's it. Okay, yeah. And now we're attaching it to. Okay, the opposite end of this. So. Sorry, I'll show you how I put the one on. And then put the second one on. Okay. Here we go. So that's what we just did. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. That's what's going on. Oh, okay. Maybe you can see some of the connection points here. Tile parts on. Oh, just, okay, both of them, yeah. Oh boy, another another set of these. Jack, do you ever communicate with other YouTube channels about Lego? Um, we have. Not hugely. The thing is, is like, how many Lego channels do you see collaborating with each other? And the answer is not many. Um, and it's partially, you know, it, I think it just mostly has to do with the fact that, uh, wait a second. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and it's mostly because uh, we don't have like a lot of. There's not a lot of collaboration that we could do that will like be beneficial for both groups. If that makes any sense. Um, you know, I'm willing to sort of test that theory. But yeah, most people, most Lego channels don't really have a group. We're all we're always like com competing. Hey everybody. Hey Willem. Hey everyone. How's it going? Hope you guys are having a good time. But uh, yeah, we have collab we've talked. Um, I remember Zatsi Nobbies wanted to collab with us. He sent us a thing and I was like, yeah, dude, let's totally do it. And then he's like all the way in Canada and like neither of us had like a really good idea on like how to do it. And we're like, okay, we'll come back to it. But um, cause he's he's actually really good about that. If you've, if you've noticed his, his channel, he's collabed with a lot of people. So um, he's, he's just like, he's just that kind of guy. I think. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to it would be nice to do to have more opportunities to do that. Oh, uh, we come in peace. Oh gosh, what is this? Oh man, <laughs> I can't tell if you guys are joking. I think you guys are joking about this whole flat Earth thing. The entire sub has just turned into that. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Yeah, have your have your fun, guys. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting uh, subs. I suppose that's nice. I wonder if it's a bunch of flat Earth subs. <laughs> So weird. Okay, so I just attached this little piece, and there's these these uh these these parts on clips that are attached here, and this this area is just attached on one stud, but it's gonna have like this clip is gonna come down. That is so strange. That is a cool weird connection point. It's it feels so odd to put that part together with the other part, but surprisingly solid. It feels surprisingly solid. Oh, and I think what that's going to be able to do is you're going to be able to tilt them. Yeah. That's what it's going to ask. It's going to ask to tilt. Yep. Yep. That's what the next page told me to do. So it can match up with the rest of the tilted pieces. So strange. That is so cool. So, like, this is such, like, a complex looking area. It honestly doesn't feel that complex, but there's so much going on in here, especially this area here was such a weird kind of cool connection point. 
but it's so this wall can like match up all the way through. Really cool. I like that a lot. Flat Earth Berserker. Okay, yeah, we are getting Flat Earth subs. <laughs> Whatever, guys. Yeah, I, apparently it's like, people are saying it's like National Flat Earth Day. Oh, I don't know, maybe they're doing it because it's like Elon Musk is doing another uh, launch today. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe it's just like, I have a feeling it's mostly ironic. I think everybody's just doing it ironically at this point. Um, whatever. Don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's, maybe that's why we, look, our, 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 the stream has gone up to 555. And I think, you know what it is? I bet you, I bet you it's just like, the flat, the flat earthers are like, oh, let's come in. Let's troll it. I'm like, all right, yeah. Bring that stream number up. Sure. Uh, from now on, <laughs> we believe in the flat earth. That's what we're bringing to you. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's just silly. It's just, I mean, it really is just silly, but, you know. Here we go. Oh my god, are you serious? Like, some Dude, this has been. Post, like, arguments, like, the earth is flat, it's all well, NASA, CGI. This has been going. All, like, uh, comp no. I like this one guy's video where he was talking about just, how it would like based on the what was shown in the video footage for like the the moon landing and the technology that was around during the oh time God, that <laughs> it would have like <laughs> Nah, it's I think I think they're just being silly um, No troll. Oh He says he's not a troll. Oh my god then you did that. <laughs> It's funny at first any jokes or stories would... Brick Vault, do you have any jokes or stories you would like to share? Sure, I like to tell... Um, I'd like to tell stories. Let's see, that's a good That's a good question. Nobody's ever asked, asked that. I got lots of stories. I got so many stories. I'm a man with a, with a past, with a checkered past. No, uh, but I do have stories. Um, let's see. Story time. Um, what's a good story? I've got I've got a story. Uh, let's see. I don't know. They're all now that I'm thinking about it. I've got plenty of stories, but I'm like, hmm, how many are appropriate to actually tell in the live stream? Uh, <laughs> how many? I don't want to I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, it's a good story. It's a good story. Oh, I've got a story. So if Earth is flat. How about the moon being like a continent? You can't. <laughs> Don't try to argue with them. <laughs> Why? Funny. <laughs> um, you guys, you guys want to? I got a, I got a good story. I can tell you guys a story. Um, oh, interesting. Look at this. Okay, so this is the bottom of the rocket, and this is where it's gonna feed into the next part. So look at that. It just fits perfectly into the studs here. Now I have to make sure that um, because these aren't exact. These aren't the exact right. Areas. Let me just make sure that. Okay, so there's one here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is correct. Okay. This is the correct point to attack. Um. Oh man, you guys are crazy. Um. I'll I'll just tell a story. Maybe you guys can. Story time. Okay. I do have I do actually have a story, and this is a good story. Oh. Wait a second. Okay. Whoa. Cool. I thought I'd, I thought I'd, wait a second. No, no, you've distracted me. I blame you. No, 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 no. I blame, I blame uh, these guys. There's, I've had a distraction and now, now I accidentally missed these pieces. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, no, it's, I blame, I blame, I blame the comment section. Definitely not my own inept. So, definitely not that. Um, but no, uh, I've got a story. Okay, why do I keep getting distracted? Okay, story time. Um, I remember when I was, I, I, I grew up in like Northern California, it, just just north of um, like the San Francisco, just north of San Francisco, essentially. Like it was still part of the Bay Area, just over the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and ooh, look at that. That is so crazy. I've never seen so many weird connection points in there. Master N, welcome. Thanks for subbing. You just you just subbed just in time for story time. Um, and 
This is a true story. Some people don't believe me, but this is actually true. This actually happened. Um, I was in high school, and it was summertime, and I lived in this area that was like really, really close to a bunch of like open space, like a lot of uh, open sort of wilderness, really. There wasn't uh, anything else really in there. And, uh, and I was camping with, uh, with a friend of mine, and we were supposed to be we were supposed to be meeting up with like other people and stuff, and they they're really irresponsible, and they didn't um, and they didn't bother uh, getting to the campsite in time before the sun went down, and they hadn't planned on not hiking when the sun went down, and they didn't have flashlights, and we we hadn't driven out to a campsite. We were just sort of in the extended backyard area of our neighborhood, but it was complete open wilderness, total wild, wild space. We had all kinds of animals living out there, deers, raccoons, coyotes, skunks, whatever, whatever. And uh, we were out there and I had this big cooler full of sandwiches because I was such a nice guy. And I and my friend and I had made sandwiches for people. We'd even like taken orders like, oh, you want this, you don't want that. Um, and then what happened is they didn't make it up to this up to this part of the hill where we were camping out and the sun went down They couldn't make it. They turned back and it was just me and my friend uh, Staying up in the hills for the night and we had sleeping bags, but we didn't have a tent So we had sleeping bags flat open up on the on the grassy hill middle of the night um so, which was fine, like, we camped out in the open before, this wasn't, like, too crazy or anything like that, but mind you, thing full of sandwiches, huge cooler, full of sandwiches, right? What happens? Not a bear, well, we didn't, there, there's no bears, like, close enough to, uh, San Francisco, I don't think, not anymore, at least. Um, what the heck, there's gotta be another pin in here. Oh, missing a blue pin. Is there another man? Where's the, was I supposed to just build one of them? Oh, I think I was just supposed to build one of them. Okay, never mind. Thought this was a times two build. Um, so, anyways, uh, there's this. So we're out there in the middle of the night, middle of the night, and uh, and of course it's like two in the morning or something or midnight or something like that, and uh, we're asleep in the in the sleeping bags in this. And this, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, this pack of coyotes starts howling like crazy. And like, normally you're around coyotes, and if you if you lived in an area where you hear them, you hear them from like kind of far away, and they make all these kind of weird yip sounds. They don't really howl like wolves would howl. They kind of just sound like weird <laughs> kind of wild animals. Um, but they're really close, because we're up in the hills this time. We're, we're in their neighborhood, essentially. Um, and I woke up. My friend, my friend was asleep. He was just totally out, totally asleep. Didn't wake up, and um, and I woke up, and then you know they kind of stopped howling, and I was like, all right. But I was still awake, and I was sitting there, and I started hearing this sound. This is true. I started hearing a sound in the uh, in the grass, or like from the from from somewhere outside in the bushes somewhere. I couldn't really tell. And uh, normally when you hear like a little uh, a little crack or a little rustle or something, it's you can always kind of tell. Like a deer will make a few little rustling sounds and it won't make any sound for a while. And then it'll move a little bit and then it'll stop or it'll make a really quick movement and kind of crash through some trees. And you get kind of used to how animals will sort of make sounds when they tromp around through the, through the wilderness. But this thing that I heard didn't sound like any of those things. You just heard, I just heard a tiny little footstep or a tiny, just something, just a tiny little bit of movement and then nothing. And then like 10 seconds later, just a tiny little bit of movement and then nothing. And this happened almost like it was a rhythm. Like this thing was taking steps, but it was taking extremely slow steps, calculated steps. And it never stopped moving. But it was, but it was so slow. It was just like a tiny little rustle, and then nothing. And then, like you know, I'm just sitting there in the total silence. And then my heart starts beating, and I start getting really nervous. I'm like, wait a second, this isn't something that's just kind of walking around here, walking around there. It is something that is intentionally walking slowly, not not trying to, you know. It, it was, it was 
it was walking slowly through the through the and we're in the middle of no like not middle of nowhere but there's it's it's open space it's wilderness there aren't people hiking out here there aren't this isn't on a on a beat like a well-beaten path we are out we found like a sort of a special spot up in up in the, uh, the hills in our back area that was really nice for camping out and nobody we liked it so much because nobody knew about it so we're like what like and i woke my friend up i was like i was like just be quiet just listen and tell me what you hear and they heard like a little like they heard the little step but they're like oh yeah i heard something okay that's nothing and then i was like no just keep waiting though just listen and then then we heard another little sound I'm like okay and then this happens multiple times now and they start saying okay like yeah i can hear i can hear something moving i can hear something moving in the uh somewhere like we we, we both could hear it and then we were just sitting there and we we're just listening and we just kept listening we just kept listening and it just never stopped moving. We realized after maybe like five minutes, like a solid five minutes of, li of listening to footsteps, that the footsteps were actually getting closer to us. And then we started really freaking out. We were like, okay, this is, this is happening. Like there is something in the, in the forest walking towards us. And, oh, I thought this was a times two. Okay, I guess it wasn't, uh, my mistake. Um, and so we're walking through the forest, or we're, we're, lit, we're in the forest, we can hear this thing walking, and we just didn't know what it was or why it was doing what it was doing. We, we, we could just, we knew it was footsteps, we knew it was coming towards us, and then um, we're just sitting there, and we're, like, let me describe where we were. Why we, well, first we'd, we'd chosen this place, because it's a really nice area. Um, this big, flat, open clearing that was very level, but we were surrounded by sort of a very steep ravine on one side of us. Almost like a, not a cliff, but like a very, very steep hill that, uh, you know, if you tried to walk down it, you might fall and start rolling a bit. Um, but then the rest of the area around us is big, open, circular meadow. Really big, wide, open area. And, uh, and it was the big, big, dense tree line. So you could see the trees that were kind of surrounding you, but this big kind of open grassland, nice, nice out in the open. We didn't have any flashlights. Um, we didn't have anything with us uh, to kind of kind of see better, but the the moon was out. So it's a you know nice bright night, uh, stars, moon, whatever. It was a clear sky, so we could we could see. Um, whew. So we're we're waiting out there, and by this time, by the time. That, like by the time it was getting close to us, we were we were well scared. We we're really like we we're sweating, and you know what should we do? Should we should we go? Should we get up? Should we run? Should we like what's going on? Should we say something? And I was like oh, I was like I don't know. Like let's just let's just keep let's just stay here. Like I don't know. We, we didn't have anywhere to go. Like we we're in the middle of nowhere. And then this is what happens. Uh, we see a shape appear at the edge of the tree line, and it was pretty big. Uh, I thought. Initially, I was like, okay, this could be like a big buck, like a deer or something, like a big full-grown male deer, but it couldn't have been that because it didn't have any antlers. So I was like, okay, so it's not, it's not that, it can't be that because we'd be able to see some indicating thing, or we couldn't even see the head, that was the thing. We couldn't even see like a big head. Um, we couldn't really see the shape of this, of this creature. It's definitely an animal. Um, and then what happens, we, we're sitting there and we're waiting and we're waiting and the thing is still just moving slowly. And at this point we've made a couple of a noises at it and we've kind of shouted a little bit and it knows that we're here and it knows that it sees us uh, or that we see it. Uh, but it kind of just, it does this big half circle around this big opening meadow that we're kind of at the edge of, um, this big clearing sort of, not a meadow. Um, and at this, <laughs> it was the scariest thing, but like it turned this corner. There was like, there was a, there was an actual corner that it turned, not a corner, but like the moon is out, right? And as it is circling us, there's just this point when you can see the reflection of the moon in its eyes, like as it's, as it's crawling around or going around the side. And you could see like these two, these two eyes staring straight at you. And at that moment, I was just like, yep, that's a mountain lion. That is definitely a cougar. Like deers, deers, you know, they have the eyes on the side of the head. They've got the longer snouts or whatever. 
this was this was a mountain lion and it had been creeping and crawling up to us for I don't know like 10 minutes at least as far as I could hear um, and soon as we could see the eyes it just started hissing at us like really really loud and it started bobbing its head up and down and kind of like because it knew we were there and it knew we could see it and it was trying to get sort of a better view at us it wasn't like didn't have this sort of element of surprise but here we are in the middle of nowhere not in the middle of nowhere but very much detached from uh, any immediate escape or rescue um, or outside contact and it's the middle of the night there's this mountain lion just circling us and hissing at us um, and uh, you know we have this cooler full of sandwiches right next to us man. cooler full of sandwiches and there's a mountain lion just hissing and hissing and uh, you know classic sort of survival thing would be to get up stand up and start yelling at it and stuff i had i had my hunting knife i had like a like a hunting knife with me that i that i usually brought with me when i go camping and i was just sitting out there and i was just like shaking like we were too afraid to like to like charge it or anything we weren't gonna like charge it and we just like we basically just like stood there and it circled and it just hissed and it just kept hissing and it just stared us down and we just stared back at it and then it just walked away <laughs> it was like the absolutely most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life um nothing more terrifying than just being in the middle of nowhere and just having to stare at a mountain lion just just angrily just staring at you basically that's all it ever did it was just staring at us hissing staring hissing and then it just walked away and we just had to stay there for the next like three hours before we could even have enough light to even try to navigate climbing down this this hill that we'd sort of you know we were kind of stuck in and so we just stood there and just like had to hang out and just hope that the mountain lion wasn't like waiting in a in some tree for us to like make a dumb move we just stood there in the darkness for like three or four hours yeah so that's my story um running into a mountain lion and just standing there as it, as it hissed forever it felt like forever you know you're standing it was probably only for like a couple minutes but yeah it's basically an eternity of, of hissing good times you guys should try it sometime yeah try try going out in the middle of the forest with sandwiches a gigantic cooler of smelly sandwiches you know smelly in the, in the sense that you know an animal could smell it super easily yeah and just and just hang out there by yourself with no flashlight mind you and uh yeah so we never got nothing ever happened to us you know it went on its merry way and we just kind of almost peed ourselves oh hey just got a uh just got a super chat from Brent Ackerman. Your opinion on buying Lepin to get old, not current, discontinued sets like the UCS Falcon, um, etc. What are you currently, that are currently overpriced? Uh, what are, okay, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, the thing is Lepin is taking advantage of a very lucrative market. That, I mean, Lego, can't in good conscience, conscience uh, re re release a super super collectible set that people have spent have spent like five thousand dollars for. People have spent five thousand dollars for the Falcon, um, and they you know personally, I you know I I do think the business practice of Leppin is just the worst. Uh, they they. Actually, this is a, it's a great time that you asked that question, Brent, because this, I think today marks, well, not today, or maybe it's the last week when they released it. This marks the first time, I think, that Lepin has beaten Lego to a release of their set. That means this Saturn V I'm building right now, just got it from the Lego store, first day it's open, already for sale as a Lepin set, as we, as we speak. And it has been, I think, for the past few days, which means they hit, they hit stores first. The Lepin set of this hit stores first. So, yeah, Lepin's bad, Lepin's bad, don't like it. But that wasn't your question. Your question was, um, do I think it's worth it if you really, if somebody really wanted to get that that set that 
is in by no reasonable means ever able, you can never purchase the UCS Falcon set now, the original, because it's $5,000. I mean, here we have a studio dedicated to Lego and building Lego, and I can't personally justify spending that much money on the Ultimate Collector Series Falcon set. It's, and that's the opinion, I think, of 90% of everybody out there right now. Um, you just can't do it, they won't do it. And, uh, yeah, and if you really want it and you think it's cool and you think it's awesome and you think it's worth it, is it worth it to get the weapon set? Really, it's up to you. I mean, I this is what I say. I wouldn't do it, but I absolutely would not judge somebody if they did it themselves. Because I can understand, I can understand even regular Lego sets are, are really pricey and Lepin and other copycat companies, not just Lepin, but other, other companies are filling the void of like, hey, the interchangeable interlocking brick is a super awesome toy. It might even be the best toy. Um, everybody loves it. It's really cool. Um, let's make it, but let's make it cheaper and make it more accessible than, you know, the guys that are on the top, the Lego, the Lego group. So I can understand people wanting to fill that that void or or take advantage of just producing a slightly less good product for a significantly cheaper price. Um, personally, I think Lepin as a company is I mean it's not hard to argue that they're that they're pretty dirty, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if their entire um, if their entire business model is to take advantage of of stealing intellectual property from Lego for as long as possible until they lose a lawsuit and then they're just no longer a company and they just make off with a certain amount of money at the end of the day. They're like, okay, that was a fun operation for five years and six years or 10 years and we just made all this money by basically just stealing the designs from, from Lego. Um, and we, we, got, we got prosecuted, we whatever, we paid out a fine and we can no longer produce Lego sets. Maybe maybe they're just gonna take their money and just and just be done with it because they are in they are being sued by Lego right now uh, for good reason. Uh, that we might even be hearing so something about that lawsuit this year. I know it started last year. Um, but yeah, long story short is I don't think it's I don't think it's um I don't think it's that. I don't think what Lepin does is good, but I wouldn't. I would not judge anybody for if they really wanted an old school Lego set that is essentially impossible to get nowadays. And Lepin Lepin does produce those sets for you know a fraction of the price. I wouldn't judge you for getting it. I, I personally am curious to see how good or bad those Lepin sets are. I've never actually messed around with a with a set from that company, but I am curious just to kind of see what it's like. Um, but no, I, I I won't. I wouldn't get it. Wouldn't judge you if you did. That's that's my opinion. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Good question, though. I like the question. Thanks for the donation. Thanks for the super chat. Always appreciate it. Booyah. Because I'm Batman. That's a great. That's a great username, sir. That is a great username. Somebody just subbed, and that was their name. N Chen, welcome. Thank you for subbing. Oh wait, that's states, states, I need another United, there we go. So many United States prints. And uh, Tyler Warmack, welcome, thanks for subbing. You guys are just jumping onto the stream. Oh man, we had so many, you know what? I was I was ignoring the flat earthers and they all left the, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> they all left. Yeah, the stream's back down. I told that boring story about being stalked by a lion, and everybody was like, ah, boring. Been there, done that. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. Um, here we go. Whoop. One more, and then two more. This is, this second half is almost the exact, it's almost, no, okay, it's not quite as big as the first half of the, of the rocket. Uh, pretty darn big though. Really, really big. Okay. And it's asking for, okay, yeah. Let's, let's finish this off. Let's get states in there. United States. Let's get another one in there. United States. All right. So we're almost done with bag seven. In fact. Ah! Oh, here we go. What's up? Uh, there's 12. 
Wait, did I just... Is this bag eight? That, oh, I did bag eight. Sorry. I finished bag eight, so there's only three bags left. Pretty good, right? At like three hours? It's actually really good. I am happy with uh, the progress that we've made. Boom. All right. So I just finished bag eight. We're moving on to bag nine. Let me just zoom this out real quick, just to let you guys see how far this sh build actually is, especially if you've just joined because this is <laughs> this is like what the first seven bags are, or something like that, or the first six bags. So this is the base of the rocket. Beautiful detailing at the bottom. I'll show you guys, of course, uh, more of this detailing at the end. This is the second half. So bag nine should should clean up this whole thing here. This should look, you know, just as well detailed as this. Um, and then the last the last the last couple of bags should be really fun though, because that's when we get to build the re-entry pod and of course the the lander itself. Um, and just like some of the more fun details. And there should be like one or two nice like detaching functions as well. So this next few bags, we're gonna be getting sort of a few more of the uh, fun details to play with. So we're officially two thirds of the way in. Um, I meant Jack, what bag is he on? So I'm on bag nine, bag nine, so you guys can see. Um, nine out of 12. So yeah, this is, Two thirds of the way in. Swing, swing, swing. Oh, and this should be fast. This last build I was doing was a little bit more complex. This one, because I, I just got a times four thing. Like it just told me, hey, you need to do this times four. So, doing a bunch of this now. Whoop, move this. What is your favorite Star Wars set? Favorite Star Wars set? Ultimate Collector. Slave one, boom. Wait a second. Let me just make sure that I've got the right. Ooh, wait a second. Do I have the right hand piece? Just want to make sure that I've got the right thing here. All these stand parts are exactly the same. So let me make sure I've got the right one of these pieces. Just want to make sure that I. Don't build onto the wrong spot. Yeah, what the heck? This is bag nine, I just opened it. Yeah, it is, okay. How many is this? Hmm. What is happening? Are all of these stand parts the exact same? What the heck? Are all of these gray plate pieces exactly the same? They all look like they are. But for some reason, they're not matching up what I see in the manual, which makes me hesitant. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Okay. Never mind. Okay, it is matching up. JK, LOL. Okay. Sorry about that, I was just getting confused. Three hours in, sorry. I was just getting confused by what was obviously in front of me. What is your favorite Batman set? Ooh, favorite Batman set? Um, I don't know. The Lego Batman movie sets, out of the Lego Batman movie sets, I'd say the, uh, the Batwing is probably my favorite. Just because that thing is gonna look so epic once we uh, find a rig to attach it to the wall. It's gonna be so cool. Um, I really like that Batwing set. Uh, as a non-Lego Batman movie set, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, maybe the, uh, I kind of like the when the bat mech was versus the gorilla grod. I kind of liked that one. That was a cool one. It was kind of weird. Like people have made way cooler mock versions now of of the Batman versus gorilla grod set, but I thought it was kind of cool. Let's see. Do you remember me from the live Stormtrooper Army live stream? Union Jack ninety nine. I think so. That username sounds familiar. Can't guarantee it, but there's. 
there's definitely usernames I, I recognize now. Jack, how do you guys know Mike originally? Mike and I met at the Lego store, believe it or not, appropriately enough. Um, yeah. That was that. Bum, does anyone here watch anime? I have a select few movies that I like. You know, Miyazaki's always, always good stuff. Can't say I watch a lot of the contemporary anime shows, except for Attack on Titan. Woo woo! Season two? Um, yeah, definitely watch that. But, uh, I mean, as in how long they've been on YouTube for. Jack, do you like Voltron? I watched the intro episode to the new Voltron show. I think it'll be a good kids show. I don't honestly, I don't know. I feel like I've watched enough cartoon shows to, I don't really get into them as much unless it's <clears throat> Rick and Morty. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. See, don't things go so much faster when you're doing repeat builds? It's not as interesting, I will admit. It's not as interesting to build as some of the uh, repeated stuff. But it's better. Oh man. Working on a collection video for tomorrow. I don't know, I think I already said it once during this live stream, but I would have had that edit done if it wasn't for House of Cards. House of Cards has thrown off my my schedule. <laughs> Why does Kevin Spacey have to be such a good actor? Okay. I'm gonna faint. You remembered me. Yeah, well you know you know what it is, is I, I look up and I definitely I only have like a second to see. I, okay, go for it. I only have a second to see like the different um, usernames and stuff. But I, I definitely remember they like you just get that feeling when you see a familiar username. You're like ah ah. Like I also notice it a lot when I read like comment sections too in the videos. There's like certain people that contribute a lot more during comment section stuff and not not as much during like live streams. But like you, then you can also recognize like oh okay yeah I remember this. Um, here we go. Okay, this is a times four, so just all of these slope pieces are just coming in like nobody's business. Interesting. Whew. So yeah, this is gonna pretty much fill out most of the detailing. And oddly enough, oh wait, wait, wait pull off on those. But oddly enough, the, uh, like this means bag 10 is gonna also still be filling out detailing onto this rocket pod, which means 11 and 12 are gonna be the only bags I think that are dedicated to building all the separate splitting off features for the rocket. Interesting. Okay. Huh. I'm kind of adding these slope pieces on first because once we get rid of the sort of slightly differentiated areas, everything after this is just gonna be all white. It's gonna just be all the exact same white slope piece. And this is, you're looking at right now, this is part of the reason why this set is so much cheaper in comparison to other sets that are that are parted out and priced out or parted out the same, the same way. This is 2,000 pieces, um, but look how many homogenous parts there are. I mean, homogenous as in like the same. They're pretty much exactly the same. Either the mold or the color is like the same. Um, so check this out. What's your favorite Star Wars movie? Turn of the Jedi. I already answered that this stream. Okay, I'm in L-E-S, not L-E-D, L-O-L. What are your favorites? Um, what are your thoughts on the new Lego Boost? Dude, I'm stoked about the new Lego Boost. All right, now these are all white. All of these pieces, it's just gonna fill up everything here. So it's just like, same, same, but the same. Um, I think the new boost should be cool. I, I actually have really high hopes for the boost. Um, I, you know, they've simplified it down, I think, a little bit. So um, it, it can work onto, uh, I think like an iPad or a smartphone. And you can kind of program different functions into it from there, which means it, but I don't, okay, this is this is the thing. I think some people think it might make it less 
uh, optimizable, which I don't know if that actually might be the case. I think they're going to leave sort of a, it open for people to make it more complex in terms of having it be more functional. They're just marketing it and having it built out in a way that'll be more clever and easier for kids that aren't as like mechanically inclined to like really get into it. And I think that is going to be one of the coolest aspects to it is I have, I've got high hopes that this thing is just going to be able to do like everything, maybe not everything, but just about everything that Mindstorm can do, but just have it be easier and more accessible. So hopefully it sort of like inspires like a lot more younger kids to kind of get into the more machining or, uh, you know, like mechatronic engineering or whatever the heck they're calling it these days. I remember my buddy got into it and that's what his major was called was mechatronic engineering, essentially programming robots to be able to do functions properly. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've got high hopes for this. Um, oh, I'm the only other Star Wars fan that thought Return of the Jedi was a favorite movie. Yeah, I told you, like I said before, I didn't think, it, when I was first talking about it, yeah, it's really not that common. Most people are like, meh, you know, they're like, ah, everyone likes the second one, you know. Um, and by the second one, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back. So yeah, but, no, I still think it's good. I don't care what anyone says. I just, I feel so much for the, for the, uh, for the Rancor. <laughs> I need to find out whether or not that, that extra scene where the guy is crying over the Rancor, I'm almost positive that that was added in. Like, cause I, cause I had like religiously watched the original trilogy um, so much before the, um, the Lucas arts, you know, revamped it or whatever and sort of modernized it and add scenes and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I think I think that was an extra added scene though, and it made me like really feel for the Rancor, and I feel like so sad every time I watch the Rancor die. Like, dude, that was like somebody's pet. Like, yeah, so what if this was like a, a group of thugs that live in the desert and they and they steal and they cheat and they and they and they well <laughs> murder people with beasts and stuff. But at the end of the day, it was like that was just their world. And then they got all oh wait a second. Oops. <laughs> Look at this. Watch this. I'm building this out building this out and I've run out of white pieces and that's because I'm an idiot um, because <laughs> this part right here should actually be open so apparently that should be out let me grab those two pieces <laughs> put them in here <laughs> and then this part here JK All right. um, yeah so, Oh, is it not? Is, is it too loud? Even it, even when the door is closed? Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay. Fifteen minutes. Mike's gonna try to record in the other room, and I'm gonna try to talk like this. What's 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 the name of that type of video where like people speak really soft and stuff? Yeah, there's like there's like a word for it. <laughs> The meditation it's not like meditation, it's like relaxation. Yeah. I was like laughing at this like last stream. Like I say, okay, so because someone said like this music is so relaxing, and it's sounds like I've been beat in the back. Yeah, there's like an acronym like, for it. Okay, I'm gonna just. Yeah, what's it called? ASMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ASMR. ASMR. Something I'm saying sorry. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. All right, sorry. Like for relax relaxation. Like. All right, guys. Mike is gonna record in the other room, and it's now gonna be. The soft and relax. Oh, if I don't drop, if I don't drop this thing, <laughs> now I'm gonna be nice and soft and quiet. Yes, yes. Okay, no, I can talk like that. All right, I'll try to, I'll try to talk a little bit softer. As soon as, as soon as Mike, Mike, just tell me when you start recording, and then I'm gonna try not to mess with you as much. Now wait a second. Looking at this. Why does this look like it doesn't want to just look, look here. Okay. Just looking, it looks like, let me just try attaching this. 
Oh wait, yeah, that totally works. Never mind. Just kidding. Sometimes I think it's not going to attach because it just doesn't look right, and then I realize that it is actually okay. okay. Look at this. Oh boy. Are you kidding me? Oop. And these parts are kind of popping off just a little bit, but make sure that it's all really well. Yeah, this feels super solid now. Okay. Um, what? Okay, this is gonna be so awesome. So, yeah, bag ten is gonna is gonna finish this because obviously it's not totally done. Um, all right, let's get bag ten out here. Oh, look at this! Bag ten's so small. It's so small. Okay, I feel like I started a conversation. Support a super chat for the time. Oh yeah, boom. Is this space on a good day to be? Okay, wow, it's so massive. Yeah, it is huge, dude. Isn't it huge? Metalizer 90. Yeah, this thing is the freaking biggest. You're just looking at, you're looking, this is the small chunk. This is the bigger one. Okay. Um, yeah, don't worry. I'll show you guys when bag 10 is done. I'll. It shows me in the picture what this thing's supposed to look like at the end of bag 10. So I'll give you guys that view in just probably like 20 minutes. Um, let me see if I can do it on this. Okay. All right, and of course, it immediately just asked me, it's all times whatever, times three, times four. Most of the stuff is times four because I'm adding to four different sides. Okay. I think it's said Ben 10. Ben 10? I don't know who Ben 10 is. Bag 10, not Ben 10, maybe Bin 10, I know Bin 10 Market, terrible place, don't go there. Alright, um, this is times four, clickety, clickety click, oh, clickety clack, don't talk back, okay, you know that, yakety yak, isn't that a song? You can hardly tell it's Lego. I agree. Yes, you can hardly tell it's Lego. Golden. Yeah. Dude, yeah, look how it's no the studs. That's the set, yeah. I was like, holy moly. Yeah. Yeah, the first I saw it like from afar. Uh, Dude, it's nuts. It it's really cool. Well, now it's in the Lego store this day, but I saw it before. What I like about this is there's gonna be two different ways to display the set. I'll get into both options. Um, and it almost looks like it'll be cool like on its side, like cooler on its side, because it's got like the special stands for it. Yeah. And just in terms no, of I just like- I kinda wanna build like a yeah, launch pad for it. Yeah, that dude, sweet. custom built like smoke, like billowing out. There's this guy, this South Korean guy, who does like the coolest smoke billowing effects. He did it for a different space, lo space shuttle launch. I remember I remember specifically looking at his stuff. He he works at a Lego store, I think. Because um, he's done it for like these big displays in South Korea. Nice. It was really, really cool. It would be cool to have like the smoke like popping and like have a custom launch pad from Technic. Do I like Transformers? Yes, I do like Transformers. But only old Transformers. This is so popular, there's going to be a number of mods on it. Oh yeah. Oh, so, dude. Uh, yeah, definitely keep our eyes open on Brick, uh, you know, Brothers Brick and Brick Nerd and like just general Flickr stuff because um, that stuff's going to be popping up like crazy. Okay, so here we go. What is happening? Okay, this is great. So remember all those crazy weird connection points I showed you guys? Okay, Mike's going to try to record. You see that though? You see the little yellow clip? That's, that's, that's us. So if I do it. Right. There you go. Let me see if I can just get it in right there. Oh. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna do that a bunch of times. Okay. No problemo, eh? Look how easy that is. All right. Mike's recording, guys. You gotta be super quiet. You must be very, very quiet. All right, let me see if I can't get this up. 
Jack, just because I am a way younger than you. Okay. <laughs> really, Oatmeal Crate. You are the prince. Self-proclaimed prince of Lego here, guys. Gotta watch out. I can hear Mike recording right now. Everybody be super loud. Yeah, I can't hear you. Can someone sub... What? Can Transformers is awesome. I liked the old school stuff. You know what I liked more than Transformers though? I liked the uh, the Beast Beast Wars. That was where it was at. It was so much more fun to watch for me. It was more fun for me to watch. Um, this is so weird. Look at this stuff. Um, super cool. Yeah, I really did like the Beast Wars though. I liked uh, Waspinator. Come on, Waspinator was where I was at. And if you guys are just tuning in and wondering why I'm speaking quietly, that is because Mike is attempting to record some voiceover in the light room. He says he can hear me. Apparently, my voice picks up on his microphone if I talk too loud. So, you might even be able to hear him talking through the, through the door. And that's what he would be hearing during his actual recorded, edited um, review videos for the channel. So, gotta be does Spider-Man Homecoming look good? I have high hopes for the movie. I think it's going to be good. See, I think Marvel Cinematic Universe is still just so much better than DC. But even if... I mean, for the most part. <laughs> but I think it's... I think it has potential to be better than, like, you know, what the next Justice League would be or something like that, just in terms of entertainment value and stuff. All right, let's get this. Let's get this. These chunks yeah, they should be fitting in. Oh, yeah, all right. Let's fit there. There we go. Yep. So let's move that over there. Yes. sound you're gonna hear if you get it in the right spot. There we go. Did you hear that? I don't know if you heard that. But... And the last one. Okay. There we go. Now we're looking at... Now the only open spots are these tan squares. So, we to assume that is where the next step is going to lead us. Oh, no, not... Wait, yes. Yes, it will. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, it will, it will right now. Pretty easy. Would you like to see Lego Torchwood Power Rangers and James Bond? Those are two very different themes of Lego, I think. <laughs> Power Rangers. Are you talking to me? Or is Torchwood like the name of a username or something? Um, definitely take James Bond and Power Rangers. Goldeneye, man. That's where it's at. Just do, just do a whole Goldeneye theme. That'd be great. The man wants a shout out. A shout out from the man. Normally I don't do shout outs so much, but he's the man. <laughs> how do you get how do you get a username like the man? That's a pretty dope username. I hate it. I'm 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 I feel bad I'm biased towards towards people that have really awesome usernames. Or ones that I think are really awesome. Oh, there we go. I hadn't actually pushed that little clip in all the way. Okay, so we're good. We've got our paneling in. Look at this. Does this even look like Lego? Does this, honestly, does this look like Lego at all? Sorry, it's like upside down, United States. Okay. Um, all right, now we're building onto a bunch. We're gonna build up to this top area so it looks like, oh man, every, every step is like a times four or like a times three. And um, how do you apply your journal? I was wondering because I'm in, to YouTube and Lego and all that stuff. 
How would I apply to be part of your channel? Well, we're not accepting applications to the channel. Uh, appreciate that you love it and that it inspires you to want to do YouTube stuff, but at the moment, we are not currently accepting applications um, to the channel. At the moment, we're just trying to figure out ways to avoid the YouTube ad apocalypse. Have you guys heard of that? We've been pretty safe from it for the most part. But oh man, other channels on YouTube are just getting decimated by algorithm changes, like absolutely destroyed. Um, fortunately, we've managed to avoid that for the most part. Um, fortunately, we've managed to uh, avoid that, but um, I think what's becoming more and more clear for people that have YouTube channels is that you can't really, you, like, I don't think anybody should be comfortable having YouTube as their sole source of income. I, I feel like people that have YouTube need to also do something else too, because with, with all the ad changes and stuff, depending on how YouTube wants to mess around with your algorithm, or if they make a clerical error when, um, when categorizing your video, you, they can destroy your channel on accident and you can't really do a whole lot about it. Um, it is, it is kind of crazy. There's stuff I'm, um, I'm learning just by knowing other content creators. Um, and the way, the way it's looking right now, it is, it's like, it's kind of crazy. It's almost like randomness. Just like your, your channel can get destroyed out of like pure chance almost. Wait a second. Should I have not put. Oh, dang it. I shouldn't have put that in here. I should have lifted that up first. Lifted this up first. Dang it. Put this part in there and then closed it down. I see. Okay. Let me keep these parts up. Been out of order. Anagram. Brick Builder. Gladiator is definitely worth and if you just like it. What? What are you guys talking about? Okay. How do you get part of the channel? Find all your great work. How did you get part of the channel? Plus one, find all of you on the channel great work. Uh I think I understand the question. For what? I mean this channel started off with my, my brother and I started doing stuff. He does other YouTube, he does another YouTube channel. And then we decided to go in on this channel together. And that's sort of how it started. We, we started just working together on YouTube. We, of course, like both like Lego a lot. So that was a pretty good starting point. And he knew all about YouTube. And we started just working from there. And that's, I mean, that's how pretty much all YouTube channels start, is like start with something that you know and that you like, that you love to do, um, and then start making videos. That's like the best advice I think anybody can get, and that is, oh, you like, you like this and you wanna make videos about it? Just start making videos and learn along the way. Nothing wrong with making a bunch of bad YouTube videos in the beginning. And then, and then figuring out how to make them better. So the best thing you can do is start making videos and see what your subs say. You know what I mean? Thank God Lego Technic is inconceivable because I just dropped my GT3RS. Really? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I don't know. I find that so funny. Okay. Um, oop! This is the last step, and then we're done with this part, not done with the whole thing, but done with this part. It's gonna be awesome. This way. Okay. Um, this five times, we've got five smaller thrusters. Sorry, I missed that part. There we go. You guys, are you excited? I'm about to show you how how tall this thing is going to get, and I bet you anything that it is not, it is not, I repeat, not going to fit into the actual shot 
What SDCC exclusives are you hoping for? Ooh, okay. Um, SDC exclusives? There's so many. I mean, I feel like they did cooler ones back in the beginning. Like, 2013 had so many cool ones because they just did a bunch of old school stuff. Unfortunately, it seems like now, DC, the last, like, two or three years, they just do figs that are based on their DC shows. You know what I mean? They had... The last like three or four DC things have just been based on television shows. So, I mean, that's sort of what I'm expecting. Um, so, sorry, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. They might have like an iron. I don't know. Um, from Marvel? I mean, it, basically, all you, you get to just kind of guess about like, oh, what's like my favorite Marvel thing that I could ever hope to get? What I want is... Iron Man Mark 1. Like, like, Iron Man in his, like, super old school suit that, like, looks like a welder's mask or whatever in the front. And it's just, like, really big and bulky, kind of like a diver suit. And that, so simple, yet so elegant. So that's what I'd want. Um, DC, I mean, what I want from DC? Um... I don't know. My favorite stuff from DC is usually Batman, but uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Let's see. I'm gonna switch to this camera because this is what I built before. And this is what goes on top of it here. doesn't really connect to anything, but watch out. Look at that. Yeah, so don't ever just try to pick up the rocket by the top because you're just going to take it in half. And that's how this top area is going to come. Look at that drop. Look at that. Watch out. Look at that. Huge. Massive. Ridiculous. Awesome. And guess what we're doing? Moving on to bag 11. Rocket's just gonna get higher. Alright, so let's get this moving on. Crazy! I'm gonna knock over this rocket piece. There's so much, they're so tall now. Hello! Yes, it is huge. And by the way, if you guys are noticing that I'm, uh. Yeah. Jack, you wish the set came with a stand for the two figures, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin? Um, I think it does kind of come with a stand. Maybe it doesn't come with a stand. I can't remember. I thought it did. Um, all right. Oh. I threw the bag and it felt a little bit heavy. And that is because that piece was still in the bag. Okay. Don't want to throw any of your Lego parts away. Almost done. Just two bags left. That's right. This bag isn't like super huge, really. Oh, yes. Alright. Oh. This is so legit. Second to last bag. Lower the music volume. I can barely hear your voice. So, yeah, maybe I will do that. I'm gonna lower the music a little bit. Hopefully you guys can still hear that. I'm whispering right now because Mike is recording his VO for, his voiceover for um, reviewing another set right now. So, let's see if I can't find all the parts in here. Sit it out, okay. So now we are building the much more narrow version of the rocket. And this is really where all the uh, astronauts we're going to be staying, and this is the last rocket piece that actually, I think, propelled them towards the moon and then detached when they made their landing. Pretty positive that's how it worked. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, we're... Make sure I get all the pieces I need on this. Oh yeah, look 
the sound. Oh, I just turned the music down, but what set? Put the ship aside. Big Benny. Oh yeah, the ship would look awesome next to Big Ben. It's like right behind me. Yeah, the ship. When I finish this, it'll be like in the background, maybe like right here. Should be pretty sweet. Um, it's not a bad idea. I think I shall take you up on that suggestion. Um, what set is Mike reviewing? How about you guys guess? So I'm speaking quiet because Mike is reviewing a Lego set as we speak. He's, it's, it's a Star Wars set. It's one of the new Star Wars sets and it's one of the new Star Wars sets we haven't either live streamed or done a review video on. Why is this not, oh, I see, yeah, it's not supposed to connect, okay. Okay. So many. Jack, you're my favorite on Brickball Show. Oh, thank you, Ethan. Love the Lego community. It's the best. Yep. I think we've got a pretty strong community here. And it's only getting stronger, which is kind of nice. Oh, you done? It's almost done. It's almost done. Okay, I can at least talk normal. Oh, God. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's, it's El Elamaris. El Elamaris. What is, it? What, is it? what is that acronym? Tracker 1. No, it's not Tracker 1. Where did you get this set? From the Lego store, man. Where do you think? And it's this is the first day it's out. Um, good chance that if you haven't picked it up today, um, the first shipment from at least out from the, the stores in San Diego are probably sold out. Very good chance. Um, not guaranteed, just a pretty good chance. So um, don't wanna discourage anybody from trying to get the set today, but I just have a pretty strong feeling that that's gonna be the case, at least in our area. Um, and probably, if it's in our area, probably for a lot of other places as well. So, hopefully, whoa, what the heck is going on? What am I building? I don't even know what I'm building. It's got a bunch of ball joint pieces and I don't know how it's going to attach. Here we go. Jack, it's called ASMR. Okay, it's called ASMR. And what does ASMR actually stand for? I just don't know. AMSR. Jack, I have to go now. It was a great stream. Oh, it's nice talking to you guys. It's nice talking. It's got the UCS Snowspeeder. You like the UCS Snowspeeder? I thought it was an awesome build. Like, you know, I think some people are were hesitant to get it just because it's not like one of the more, it is a really iconic ship from the, from Star Wars. Don't tell me, it's not, it's not, not like it's not. It's just not the most popular thing and they've already done a version. So people were kind of like hesitant about getting it, but I still think it is like one of the coolest UCS sets that has been made by Lego. It's really, really good. Okay, here we go. Interesting. So this is a totally different approach in how this thing is being built up and we're getting that nice cylindrical shape because it's this is more narrow now. So like I said, somebody asked me like what my favorite building technique was in the beginning and I was like, I, I didn't really answer in terms of technique, but I what I do like finding out and like seeing how people create stuff is how they create cylinders, like different size cylinders different styles of cylinders. Um, that's just something I've recently been sort of paying attention to. Um, so this is kind of a perfect set actually to really start like checking out sort of how they put stuff together. Ooh, look at this, this is gonna be fun. Okay, look at this. So we're gonna have some alternating white and red. Uh, these modified side studs so there we go Ooh, it's gonna be nice and solid some green there you go got some christmas colors going on <laughs> it's the quad jumper yes you're right quad jumper mike's building the quad jumper oh wait a second i built this wrong look at this i messed it up Oop. Put this face 
increasing. Oh. Hold on. Oops, messed that up. Okay. Okay, there we go. I attached them the wrong direction. My mistake. Okay. And there we Whoa. Did this light just flash a different color? Okay. Ooh, nice and colorful. You can tell when there's all these nice colors in here that we're definitely not going to be seeing this uh, in the final build. Ooh, nice. Okay. Gosh, the building here is so different. Some of it really does feel very strange. And this is this is definitely going to be one of the examples. One, uh, one of the techniques. So we have these sort of rotatable... These these clip pieces, the single stud pieces with the with the parallel clip, that is by far or bar really, uh, that is by far one of the uh, more common pieces in this set, and I think it's a relatively new piece to system sets, uh, or it's a relatively relatively new piece system piece I should say, um, but they're finding some awesome uses with it, and I think this is one of the better examples of them sort of playing around with this new part and seeing what kind of better connections they can create and um, showcase sort of like new types of detail that they weren't maybe able to do before. So this is this is a good example of like a really cool system set piece. Um, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm going to add another one of these black plate pieces on top of it. Okay. Weird. doing I don't even know okay so this is this is yet again just one of the strangest combinations of parts I've put together okay we're gonna make it nice and strong now okay this is correct make sure that I get this on in the right position yeah yep that should be it what on earth are we doing what type of cars Jack, have we built the Ferrari F40? The Ferrari F40 was, I think, one of the first LEGO sets built for the Brick Vault channel. Uh, my brother built it. We did an episode that my brother built. Um, yeah, and uh, we have it. I wasn't the one that did it, but he did it, and I think he really, really liked it, as far as I can as far as I can remember. We still have it in the back. It's actually just out of the shot. The Ferrari F40 is like, it's like right there <laughs> in terms of uh, where it actually is in the studio. But we do have the F40 and it's pretty awesome. And I want them to do the Lamborghini. I want them to do the, um, what's the name of that one Lamborghini? That's sort of like the classic. Like there's the F40, which is like, one of the more classic uh, Ferraris. And then there's the Lamborghini something that is like the classic Lamborghini in yellow and it's sleek and it's got those fins in the back. You know what I'm talking about? Those like rivets. Um, that's what I want. I want I want Lego to do a legit Lamborghini. All right. We're almost there by the way, in terms of in the long scheme of things, we're at like three minutes, three hours, 40 minutes roughly. And um, what the heck? How are going to be missing that big piece? Okay, we got one of them. Where the heck? How can I be missing that? I'm like looking for a two by six brick, a white two by six brick. They only because we need two of them. What the heck? This is not cool. I know for a factoid. Okay, you know what? All right, I just pulled a two by six out of out of our regular 
out of our regular uh, supply. That is weird. It shouldn't. That shouldn't have been the case. I don't know why I had to do that. It's like the largest piece that they could have included in this bag. For some reason, I just didn't have it on me. Odd. Odd indeed. It'll probably show up later. That's how it usually goes. Fortunately, because we have such a large studio, if I can't immediately find a piece, I just pull it out of the collection. And then as the build goes by, then you can just kind of like, oh, there's the piece I was looking for. You know, <laughs> like it'll just appear after I like lift some parts up. Um, yeah, it's one of the one of the better advantages I think um, of having a larger studio for building sets. You're just like, wow, like I could I could spend my time looking for stuff in a certain area, or I could just grab the part I need immediately, use it, and then it'll show up at the end of the build, which is almost always the case. Oh, this one's turned upside down. Bam. We're building another times two. Wow, there's so many. Okay. Classic old Lambo is the Miura. Miura. Okay. I'm I'm so out of it that like you you're probably totally right, and I probably just still don't un like like you could tell me the right one. I still just like don't know the name of it. I don't think I ever did know the name. I just know what I I just know what I like in terms of like what it looks like. Ugh. That would be so cool though. In the in the in the uh, the yellow with the with the doors that go you know. Vertical. All right. This is by far some of the strangest connections, though. I like this a lot. I can I can definitely understand why it's a more advanced building technique. Um, but really not that difficult, you know. Like advanced for sure, because they're they are they are throwing some really interesting connection points at you. Um, there we go. But not, but none of it like feels feels difficult. If that makes any any sense. Here we go. And I know I'm looking for. Oh, there we go. Here it is. This is a times two. Let me repeat this one more time through. Oh boy, you guys getting ready? All right. You know what's funny is like there's kind of like a, a rise and fall in terms of uh, people staying onto the stream. There's like a steady amount. But I feel like there's always less people watching at the end of the stream when like the actual build of the of the thing is almost done, as opposed to like sort of the beginning. Which I guess I I guess kind of makes sense. But you know, from from a logistical sense, I'm like, oh, we're almost done. Oh, there's like way less people watching now. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have noticed that Cuba is full of classic cars. Yes, it is. I'd love to visit Cuba. I think it'd be nice. Ooh, this is cool. Cool. Okay. Very nice. So here we go. Some bits of extra detailing here. Yeah, the Diablo is a classic. Oh yeah, Lamborg is that it? The Diablo? The Lamborghini Diablo? I feel like that's a really recognizable name too. Yeah, it feels like a super recognizable name. Okay, here we go. So this thing's still upside down. And attaching on this side Oop. okay okay whoa that is that is nuts just like what just in terms of how you create a cylinder did you build this mic look at this thing like look how look how crazy that connection point is 
It's like you built like these these side pieces here, like that's what's on the outside. Mm -hmm. That is cool. That looks pretty good. That is nuts. That was like so much complicated stuff just for adding. And then we're gonna build the opposite version to fill out that little area. And then we should have like pretty much a perfectly small cylinder once again. Really cool. Super weird. All right. And I think Mike is recording again. So I'm gonna start whispering sort of. And now I'm missing part. Oh, there it is. I don't wanna miss too many pieces. This is cool. Gonna have some more stuff. Lamborghini Diablo, like from 1999. Oh yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. I think it was the Diablo I was thinking of initially. Um, that would be a cool, that would be a great creator set. A yellow Diablo. That'd be awesome. Yeah, buddy. Attach some more pieces here. Adding a little bit of a one of those bouillon pieces, but it's not gold; it's in gray. Hopefully, that'll make some cool detailing on the outside. I know there's some people that know like way. Why are these comments different on the ones on the video? Because um, they're delayed. This video is delayed like 20 seconds. I'm getting a little bit of light flicker from one of my lights. I don't know if you guys can notice that. Hopefully it's not too bad. Yeah, it's getting stronger. You know what's funny is we are having light flicker from one of the lights last week, but it was the other light. Now this new, now the, now the one that was good is starting to flicker also. And then the one that was flickering last week is totally fine. And they're the exact same light. Isn't that weird? I need this set now. It's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. Okay. Oop. There we go. Look at the, this ridiculous extra detailing that goes into it. This is pretty nuts. I don't know if I've messed around with the set. It has such a crazy, minute attention to detail. They really do here. Let's get this one, boom. Mic is recording, I have to be super quiet. Let's see. Ready, steady, go, boom, look at this. Oh, dang it, attached it one stud. Oh, there. there it is. And we should be messing around with the bouillon pieces towards here. And there it is. Ready? Snap. Okay. And the next one, bouillon piece towards the top. Push that on a little bit. Okay. There we go. And snap. Look at that. Beautiful. Ugh, it's so cool. Okay. Now we should be finishing off this top part of the rocket with a really, really simple bit of detailing. Take almost no time at all. Get some of these side panels off. Yeah. Jack, you and your brother should have a building race to build a set and have it as a live stream. I would like watching that. I would like watching that too. Yeah, he's, you know what's funny is like, I think he's live streaming right now as we speak um, on his gaming channel. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, he could, he could, uh, I wonder if he'd schedule it on like level cap. We could stream it on our channel here and then he could stream it on level cap gaming. <laughs> Have one set. It's funny because I know like people really like getting into the build thing and I think that would make great YouTube content. The one thing I'm afraid of is like, I don't want that to encourage people to like think that building fast is like somehow better than building slow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it isn't like at all. And the last thing I want to do is like try to like discourage people for like feeling bad about building slow. It's like, dude, I build slow. I mean, the only the only thing is just like entertainment, just like, all right, let's just see who can like beat the other person. But, you know, anybody who does long term Lego building will tell you. It's like the last thing you want to care about. What you want to care about is making something that's awesome that you're happy with. And we're just about there. Let me turn this over back onto here. 
we are just getting the last little bit of detailing on this. Oh, and we're flipping it over again. Okay. It's going in here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm what I'm up to. Oof. Okay. Interesting. See this this looks like such a specific detail to include here. Um, I can't tell you I, that I know what it is, because I don't. But the way this thing is detailed, it looks like it's. It, it this is probably m mimicking a very very specific, real attachment point, for for some of the rocket. It looks really good though. Here we go. A nice sort of metallic silver, coming in here. Come on, go through. There we go. There it is, and same as the last. Just the tiniest indication of thrust. That's it. Crash driver, welcome. Thanks for subbing. Boom. And we just built the bottom rocket piece. Oh, nice. Now, I just want to double make sure that I've got everything in here that I need. Now, I'm looking at something. Because I've got this. What the heck? Hold on, this cannot be a, an extra part. Sorry guys, I'm gonna look through the manual really quick. You can see what I'm doing. Um, oh, I made a tiny rip in the manual. Oh no. I feel like every single one of my manuals has a rip in it. Is there supposed to be a, is there supposed to be a dish in the bottom? No, what the heck? I just got here. Cause I'm looking here. All right, this is the beginning of the manual. Steps is only like a few pages worth. Okay, and I know that both of the dish pieces came out in this bag. Just don't wanna, no, oh, there's no dish pieces involved here. There's one dish piece. Yeah, that's it. Okay, interesting. Doubt this is a spare part, but if I end up needing it for later down the line, I will let you guys know. Odd. But anyways, we're gonna put this in here. Look at that. Now, oh, I see. There's these clips. There we go. I just I just clipped it in, so it's good enough to hold the, this part of the rocket on. And you can just kind of pull it out. And it doesn't doesn't really do anything. You couldn't. I don't think you could hold onto this rocket. You can't pick it up, you can't, like the weight of the bottom part of this rocket isn't gonna be enough to hold it up. So of course, when you pick up the rocket, it's gotta be by the smallest form. And guess what, guys? Guess flipping what? Last bag. I had a massive part extra on my GT30RS. Guys, last one. Oh yeah, it feels good. All right, let's get this open. Let's get this thing good. Right. Okay, no extras. And two other small bags. Oh yeah, I know what these pieces are for because I've sort of studied what some of this is gonna, what this is gonna turn into. And what's, what's great is like the end of the rocket actually looks like really easy. That's gonna be, we're gonna finish the actual rocket in just a second. And then most of this last bag is gonna be building the lander and the stand and the uh, and the re-entry pod. So, that's all the stuff for later down the line. Yep, and first step is getting the, the rocket completed. So, let's do it. And I know I wanna be really excited for this part, but Mike is recording. Mike. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. I don't want to be sipping through too many extra parts here. But there really aren't that many pieces that are coming in this set. Oop, oop, that wasn't it. Dang it. Oop, there it is. All right, guys, are you ready? This 
I honestly think it's only like a handful of steps until uh, this whole thing is done. Until the whole rocket is done, at least. You done? Dude, I'm on the last bag. That's cool. I, this thing has problems with batteries all the time. It died on me again. Died on you again? Yeah, it's like it's like when I move it, maybe it gets uh, disconnected or something. Interesting. I'm fresh batteries. Yeah, this is the second time it's happening. Okay. Yeah, um, well. Just, just I have to have a habit of like monitoring the audio levels all the time. Yeah. Because it just dies on you without any warning. Okay. Okay. Good to note. Good to know. All right, but are you are you done, or? Yeah. Okay, cool. Boom! Last bag, guys. I can be super loud again. Yeah, boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Whoa. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is so weird. This is such a cool, strange way that they're attaching this. So it wants you to attach. Once you tw to get 12 of these things, three three on top of each other, and once you do that four times, so that's 12. So let me just do that really quick, and let me show you what the heck you're supposed to be doing this, or why why the heck you're supposed to be doing this. This is so strange, though. I didn't think, I didn't notice this on the uh, initial on the initial first look, but this is what's going on, and it's it's something I have not seen before. So. During the stage of this build, uh, it's been almost four hours, um, I, have, I have probably come across like th three or four different techniques that I've never come across before. Not after copying mock builders or any other LEGO sets. You know, I've built probably like 300 LEGO sets or something like that in the last year and a half. Uh, and three or four different techniques here that I've never seen before. So, this is what it wants you to do. It wants you to have these things pointing outwards in the directions, obviously, away from each other. So they're all pointing out. And then, once you do a few other things before you, you mess around with them again, but you're gonna go back and mess around with these. <laughs> Let's see if I can get them to, there we go. Let's get that on. And then, okay, this is, this is the interesting part. So we've got this, this area, you can push the cross piece all the way up into here. And then, push it all the way through the center of these, oops, here we go, center. Nice and strong. So you've got a, a Technic cross piece that's really keeping this thing steady. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. What you want to do is you want to just push these against each other. So they're all facing around like this. See that? That's what you want. Yeah, and from afar, it does kind of look like a cylinder. There's a little bit of the black you can see on the inside. Um, kind of interesting though, right? I was not expecting that. Then everything else is kind of just normal. And wait a second, where's that little cone piece? Here it is. Is that the tip of the rocket? I think that's just the tip of the rocket right here. Oh wait, no it's not. Huh? JK. It's almost there. Um, yeah. Just need that little thruster. It's coming in there. Oh, it looks like we're building from the tip and back. Does that make sense? So. We got, this is the tip of the rocket, and then there's actually a bit more of the build that's coming out here. I, I jumped the gun, I was like, we're almost there, but just a tiny bit more. Oh, okay, so that's it. You have a little bit of the tan showing through. Boom, 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 you guys are talking about cars. Totally cool. All right. Oh, nice, okay. So we're adding, these are two more sections to the rocket. This is the breakaway halves. These halves split in half. I think they do that in real life as well. And that's part of the allure to this set. It's not only does it look absolutely immaculate in terms of just like how it looks in the build, it looks so perfect, but 
it comes apart in all the ways that the rocket should be coming apart in, you know, the way it did back in the 1969 launch. Um, because, you know, the whole rocket doesn't obviously fly to the moon. It's just, it's just the last little bit that takes all the extra pieces just to get there. So, <laughs> times two. And if I'm not mistaken, yes. Okay, so there's that little bit of space here, that Technic cross piece. And that's what's going to allow you to get in between there. So now we've got, guess what? That was it. So that is what attaches itself to this. Let me just make sure if there's any special lines it's supposed to go up to. I don't know. I don't think it's supposed to be anything different from what we see. So let me just see if I can't get these to fit in where they're supposed to fit. Dang it. Looks like this line is supposed to match up with, ah, I see. I see where this is supposed to go. This line is supposed to match up here. There it is. Oh, okay. Very quickly before I finish the lander, um, I'm going to do something that needs to get done immediately. And that is hit this button, come back here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. There it is. There's the rocket. Rocket is done. That doesn't mean this thing is done. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mike. He's still recording. Yeah, he is. Look at that thing. Okay, I don't want to hold on. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't want this thing to, to fall down. Apparently, Mike was handling one of these, and he already dropped it. So, anyways, look at that thing. Watcha! It's a meter high. I'm going to put it on the floor. <laughs> That's it on the floor. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take it apart because it's actually supposed to, I'm building a stand for it now. Let me switch back to this. Okay, so it comes apart in the three big sections. Where the heck? Why am I not able to pull this? Where does that part even come? It's so, the line between where the f big part of the rocket and the smaller part of the rocket is, is so perfect that I legitimately forgot where it's supposed to attach. Uh, I don't know. Like, I want to pull it apart again, but I forgot where it actually comes apart. <laughs> Whatever. I'll leave the I'll leave that chunk together for now. Actually, I'll leave it standing up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. That is massive. Let's get the uh Ooh, sweet. Okay. I like this part. So there is a stand. There is a stand for the uh the lander. Uh -huh. It's kind of like a little moon rock crater right here. Nice. All right. Yeah, let's get this last bit done. And this here is the beginning of the lander. Let's get this thing going. Hey, cool. Four squares of gold. The little pearl gold. Oh, thank you, Black Panther. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, oh, we got some. We have some Russians, I think, walk, watching from Twitch. Awesome. Interesting. It's the first first time I've seen uh, foreign language appear from from the Twitch stream. Does that mean we're like super popular? Rocket's done, man. Whoa. Try not to break it this time. I mean, you know. Finished? The rocket's done, yeah. It's pretty fast, like four hours in. Yeah, right? Isn't that like... Dude, it's just because they set the bags up so perfectly, and the actual build itself is just so logical and easy to follow. Um, so, uh, yeah. Because I think you guys, if you've definitely, especially if you're, if you're long-time streamer watchers, you've seen me attempt sets that are way smaller in part count that have taken longer, I think. Um, it's nearly 2,000 pieces, and this is probably not going to be much longer until the final product is done. Okay. 
Really interesting. I like the way this is looking. Okay. Kind of like this song for this too. Feels a little bit. Ooh, oops, oops. Ooh. You wanted me to put. Actually, this is totally pointless. Maybe. Um. I don't know why. The detailing doesn't look like it's ever going to show up. But maybe they know something I don't. Oh, I love this. So this, these, these gold parts are the sprayed on gold. They're the painted on. So they look better. They look more shiny than the pearl gold. And I think just about everybody agrees that it's a much better looking gold piece. Yeah. And I, like, I kind of like the differentiation between some of the more shiny areas. Um, okay. Oh, cool. Okay, we have some st open stud pieces that go into these clips. Nice. These are gonna make the legs. Let's do that a bunch of times over. Plot twist: Jack is not building a Lego set. Dun dun dun. It's actually Leppin now. <laughs> that means <makes sense. laughs> JK, it's just it's just a Leppin set. Oh no. <laughs> just like lose all subscribers all at the same time. All right. Bow, bow, bow. Nice and shiny. That is correct. This is a very nice and shiny set. All right, come on. Let's get the. Okay, this is the head. This is the head of the lunar lander. Let's see if I can't put this together. I'm like excited. Well, I'm more excited to finish this set than I have been for like finishing a set in a long time. I think this is just going to be one of those classic sets that people are going to talk about like five years from now and be like, oh, but remember that lander set though? That remember the the Apollo? Saturn V, that thing was, that was a Lego set. You know, I feel like that's what, that's that's how people are gonna kind of treat this one. It's kind of got that, just like long term, long standing value. That's what it feels like at least. Because the build is just perfect. Um, where is it? Oh, here we go. That's why I wasn't able to find it. Because I was jumping ahead. People are like, I hate Lepin, yep. Lepin is pretty much, yeah, it's like the the ultimate set that the ultimate thing that Lego fans can pretty much unanimously hate on. But there was that question, that good question that came from Brent earlier um, about like, what do you think about people buying the classic Lego sets that are like just too insane for a regular person to ever consider buying, but Lepin sells them for like a sort of reasonable price. Um, I was just like, yeah, I don't judge it. Wouldn't judge it. Um, I wouldn't do it, uh, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't judge it. I can understand people wanting um, some of that classic stuff. Uh, there it is. All right, that's a nice little print. Oh, come on, focus. Yeah, it's a little overexposed, but. That is, I think that's the opening. Is that the hatch that opens that goes out to the? Because this, I think, is at the. Yeah, I think. The, no, 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 nope, nope. That's not. That's the observation window. Sorry, that's the observation window. These, these, the, the blue, paneling. I'm almost positive are the windows, um, where they can see out onto the lunar surface. Don't quote me. I'm not like some expert at this, uh, but I'm pretty sure that that is what we're looking at. All right, almost there. Oh, interesting. Oh, I think I see why they did it like this. Oh, okay. So, we're actually pretty much, yeah. Oh, you know what I did is I, as I attached this head, yeah, one, one, one little bit off. So believe it or not, it should actually go on this way. But that's actually it. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was going to go on quite like that, but boom. Lunar Lander. Done. 
it has this open Technic cross piece on it. And I know why now, because we're going to attach something to it. Um, cool. And we've got, whoa, we have four. Oh, one's a spare, I was going to say. So there's four astronauts, even though um, there was like one guy who got there and he like never got to leave. <laughs> he like never got to go outside the uh, the actual shuttle, uh, the, the landing pod, which is just like, dude, whew, I feel so bad for that guy. Not only does he like not at all go down in history as like one of the first people to land on the moon, but like, all right, so I'm setting up the display, but Dude, it's like once in a lifetime opportunity. I would have broken protocol. I would have gone out there. What the heck? So there it is. There is there's what the display is. There's technically a third guy. Um, they have him off to the side because there were three astronauts. I can't even remember his name. Lance Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and then this guy. <laughs> um, so he never actually left. So there's only ever two guys on the first moon landing. And then this is the spare part. This is the spare. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'll keep all four there. Um, all right, let's make the landing. Let's make the uh, re-entry pod. I kind of like this. The so the display the the display uh, studs, of course, are in the middle here. I think this is a new color molded in, but I like the way they uh, they had this attached. Is the pod is going to be off center? So this is like the blue ocean where the where the pod lands back in the water. Um, let's get this. Oh yeah, okay. This is this is the print, by the way. Sorry, let me just I'll show it. Yeah, there it is. So there's the opening hatch. A couple of little observation windows, lots of little handles. Uh, I don't have to ask, but I'm pretty darn sure, or I don't have to. I'm pretty sure they got this detailing very very close to the original detailing. And then um, yeah, so you've got this thing here. That was kind of fun because it has these little flotation things. Make sure that the pod doesn't flip over upside down. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yep. One, two, three. We have another little gold part here. And oh, wait a second. I messed up. I'm supposed to put a one of these pins in here. Yep. There. Okay. And we should be good to go yep so there's that there's a little re-entry thing and there's one more aspect to this and I think it's one of the nicer details yeah here it is this is I like this so we have this because the re-entry pod had um sorry did I say Lance Armstrong <laughs> no not the not the bike rider wait Neil, wait, yeah, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. I said Lance. God dang it. <laughs> I've been building for four hours, guys. Cut me some slack. <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear. Okay. All right. There we go. Let's make this an actual circle now. Oh, oh, there we go. Perfect circle. Perfect. I thought it was going to be rattly, but there's actually enough tension. Look at that. It actually, there's enough tension where it's not going to come out. That's so cool. I really thought that was going to be a loose, loose end. Um, okay. Then this is just the stand. This is just the display stand. So let's get this thing done and let's get the final review underway. Am I doing this times two? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, but I'm doing this part of it. So cool. Okay. So the display stand is going to be. I'm now. Now I'm kind of looking for during this display stand area. I'm like looking for parts that I think might be extras because I know they did something special to try to get the part count right up to 1969. So I'm just like, what did they do? Like, what was the thing that they did that was unnecessary? but increased or decreased the, the part count. Um, my guess is that they did something to increase, um, but we can never know. 
How come in the thumbnail you have a beard, but... <laughs> yeah, the thumbnail is an old picture. Sometimes I just superimpose the box art images onto a pre-existing picture I took. It's just faster. Sorry. True story. Okay. We're almost there. Almost there. Okay, and... Yeah, let's do this again. And do that, boom. Actually, wait a second. I That should be facing the other way. Okay. So there's one bit of display. And then this next part is a times two. And that should be it for display. And that should be it for the entire set. You guys excited? I am excited. I think I'm more excited than you guys. Make spacecrafts great again? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. Can you do this one more time? One more time, guys! Oh my god, so close! Up, up, up. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's get this thing going. All right. And that is the last. Is, it, is, is that really it right there? I think I, just, I think I just put the last piece together. Boom. I did. Yeah. Okay. Let's... Okay, let's first show off the rocket again, because I think that's the main thing everybody is interested in, especially if you join the sub thing a little bit. Okay, so officially I'm done. You can't even see me adding the top. Okay, this is ridiculous. Um, first, let me let me break it down first, actually. I know there's another, I think this is the point right here. Ugh, there, I knew, I knew that was it. The, the the connection seam is so strong that for a moment, I honestly didn't know where the two halves met, which is crazy, right? Um, so let's go one chunk at a time. I'll switch to this camera. I think it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit better. Um, okay, so here's the bottom. Those, uh, those are some white pieces underneath the trans orange that just gives the illusion of some thrust, nothing over over the top. Some nice details to notice at the bottom are the fuel lines. You can see that's one of the fuel lines uh, that feeds the j rocket fuel uh, directly into the bottom part of the thruster, or at least part of the rocket fuel. I know there's obviously the tanks where it's it's shooting a bunch out, but there's there's like I know it's like a reactant or something that like really enhances that final thrust or something. Uh, there's these nice sort of double clipped, they're almost like double handlebar pieces that are molded in this like sort of kind of like reflective gunmetal. Um, this actual connection piece here, for these these covers, was a fun little build. Uh, just some ratcheted joints that fold around the top. Pretty nice. And uh, here's just, by the way, you might be able to uh, uh, see what the bottom actual end of the of the jet thruster is. That's That's a barrel piece. That's half of a barrel piece. Um, that's been molded into gunmetal. I believe I believe that's the name of it is the gunmetal mold. So it's a little bit reflective, kind of like the dark silver, whatever you want to call it. And also this is that's also been molded in gunmetal as well, which is I think a first time color for that piece. So yeah, and then and then even the yeah even the middle thruster has one of those jet um, thruster things, one of the uh, one of the fuel lines, whatever you want to call that. I'll turn it back a little bit. So you can see this without quite as much overexposure. And uh, oops, I'm like knocking into this area. So we have some fins here. Once these fins are on, uh, you can't lay this thing flat on its side or these fins are gonna break off, but that's why we have these uh, display stand here. I will show you how that works in just a second. But let me move up, boom, all printed pieces. Anything here that you can see as a detail, that's all printed. So printed, USA, okay, um, printed. The connection points between all of these things is really fun. I really like, there's a little bit of looseness to it because they're all kind of clipped on. A lot of satisfying like snaps and stuff to get everything in here. And it's almost a little bit wobbly there, but 
Um, it really is. I mean, like it's not actually wobbly. There's just some of the some of the clip points have a little bit of. They could just go back and forth just ever so slightly, but really nice stuff. There are two sets of cylindrical sort of like barrel pieces that kind of come up and down the sides there. Well, on both sides, that's the same. It's the same deal. Looks pretty decent though. And uh, look how look how cylindrical. If I can just show you from here, these are just parts that they just made cylindrical. This isn't like some special cylinder pieces. There are some cylinder pieces on the inside, but that's mostly for sort of structural stability. Um, but like, look how perfectly like that is pretty dang good considering it's just it's just curved pieces and plate pieces and stuff. Um, really, really nice. Uh, moving up, this is once again more American flag prints that are there, and then we should be looking at actually the United States prints art up until we get higher. So this is the top, and um, yeah, there's the kind of cuts in a little bit. Let me let me show it from a slightly less light angle. There's a little bit of cutting in with these with these flat pieces kind of sticking out towards the top. Yeah, that's a good way to good way to see how that angle cuts in, and then. This is the interior, not really meant to be shown that much. Um, looks pretty clean. Um, I kind of would have, maybe the clip pieces in those green, there's a little bit of green showing on that side and, and on the other side there's a little bit of green. Uh, would have liked it maybe because you can display this on its side separated. So at a certain point during display, you can see the inside. So I would have liked maybe a little bit of different clips, but who knows, maybe the interior of this actually had some red internal structuring. That's possible. It really is. Um, and the main thing here, though, to take note of is these clips. Clip, 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 clip. And that is, of course, what is going to be attaching. Sorry, I'm going to move that over. That is what is going to be going to attaching to the bottom of this. So it's a good segue, a good way to transfer. So these are the, these are the attaching clips. Um, I'm going to attach them all at the end. But here are the thrusters, much smaller. Everything here is reflective silver in terms of what's on what's on the, for the thruster. Those are tire pieces. Those are actual, you know, the same piece that you get for the internal tire structure for any modern speed champion set. That is the more common piece used. So you can see sort of the interior with the the spinning rims or something, and that's just a single or trans orange stud for fire or thrust. There it is. What it looks like kind of further away. That's the the overall shape, which is I think pretty darn accurate. I think it is. I think most will agree that it is. And um, so this black will match up with the white and stuff on the on the other side. I'll show that off uh, when they when they get attached. United States. Those are one says United, the other one says States, which is cool because you can actually if you separate them out from each other, you might be able to use these in different for different purposes. They don't necessarily have to match together to say United States. Because United is one is one. I think it's a one by six uh, plate piece, and then States is a one by six plate piece, and you get a bunch. You get a bunch. You get a bunch. You get four pairs, obviously, and um, and that cylindrical thing that I was showing you guys before that still matches up as well. And I'll show you when this thing matches and these clips come in. I really don't know. Like just just note that these cheese wedge pieces, this cheese wedge piece and these bars. That'll be your actual indicator to tell you that this is where the rocket is supposed to detach because this line here is gonna be perfect to the other side of the rocket. Anyways, moving up, we've got some more of these um, bracketed, or sorry, uh, great pieces. That There was a lot more of it on the, on the first rocket, the lower one, but there's it's the same exact build style, the way they all kind of clip in. There's a little bit of looseness to some of them, not really, it's pretty tight actually. And um, Here's the build that kind of comes in. So we've got these are on a on a little on a little jointed piece here, and then we've actually just got some flat sort of curved pieces that are kind of like the nose, you know, the old nose to like rocket ships and stuff. Um, now, once again, the main there's a little bit of red and green and and some blue this time showing as as other highlights, which doesn't really take too much away. Honestly, they could be going for certain types of accuracy. Um, that might actually exist within the real internal structure of the rocket. I'm not entirely sure, but these are the two clips, the open mouthed clips. There's only two sets of them now instead of four, and they are going to be attaching to this. 
So this is the second, this is the third, sorry, third rocket. And we've got two clips here. So this is where they would both be. <laughs> well, that part came off. Got a, yeah, I guess, it, ooh, there we go. So this part is actually a little bit loose. It's loose, and if you just push it in a little bit tighter, it should be fine. Oh yeah, it feels a little bit loose. There we go. The tension's not too bad. Um, so yeah, so this is what it kind of looks like as its overall shape there. Now the cylinder is a, di it's a totally different set of builds that makes this up. And so we've got our standard slope pieces and then these straight pieces are attached um, on these two different ball joint pieces that kind of allow you to keep it at this sort of angle that's kind of like the exact angle you need to make uh, something that looks as close as to a similar as cylinder, sorry, as you can. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Um, here there's a little bit of clip detailing. I think this is to not only, this is, you know, it's a nice little bit of uh, detailing here, but it's also an indicator, This these little flat edges. This will help you indicate on where you can kind of break the set apart again. So this is the top of this other area. I think this is the last, this is the last thing that really helps jettison the, um, helps jettison the, the, the lander towards, towards the moon. And these pieces kind of break away. They split out. And here we've got, if you look at it like this, this is, this is what, this is where the lander was going to be. And this is, I think the re-entry pod. So this is the last bit of what the lunar lander was. Uh, I think the, the, the tip comes off as well. I'm almost positive of that. So yeah, and we can do a regular review on this. I think we absolutely can. And so you can look forward to that. So this isn't just gonna be a live stream, it's gonna be a regular review. But of course, spent the time to build this thing. So I am gonna show you guys all the features. Fun little fun little design choice, build choice that they did with uh, all these flashlight pieces. And there's a cross, Technic cross piece that goes through. Makes this thing really, really, well, most of it really, really strong until that, <laughs> that last little bit. Um, but yeah, definitely changes up the look of the rocket. Um, and yeah, so this is this is kind of the smaller bit. And then we have it, sort of the internals of that, upscaled to the actual lunar lander itself. So this is the lander. Um, it's mostly pearl gold molded pieces. So what I mean by that is this type of piece is the actual color of the plastic. And uh, I know some people aren't as big of a fan of that. The, there are just a couple of these cheese wedge pieces that have the uh, more reflective more reflective gold pieces. If I pull it back, it doesn't feel quite as overexposed. But um, yeah, this is the shape, the general shape of the, uh, yeah, the general shape of the, the lunar lander. I think it looks pretty darn good. We got a bouillon piece, open cross Technic piece in there. You can see just a little bit of the uh, yellow internals. And then let me turn this light down a little bit because it'll be a little bit overexposed. Both, but if I turn it down and get it nice and close, you can really start to see the print. So there is the observation area where the pilots can see out. One of there's four pilots, technically speaking, if you want to be like all accurate, it was only Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Two pilots ever made it onto the lunar surface. There was a third one included, and then there's actually an extra because this is a small enough part to where you would get an extra astronaut. But in real, but you know, realistically, there was only ever two guys on. This is a nice little print showing the uh, the American flag, which they held up, I think, with a pole. There was like a poster, something that went underneath, that went through the flag on the top to kind of keep it from falling down because, you know, there's no wind on the moon, so there's no natural way to keep the flag up there. Um, yeah, so this is an extra, and this guy never actually went onto the moon. He was only ever inside the, the lander itself. But that's, you know... Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep all four of them on display just because. Where the hell Where the heck else am I gonna put these guys? Um, nice. I think I think the lunar lander is awesome. I think it's great. I think they did a good job with them. And there's one extra piece that they made for the whole rocket. I'm gonna show the whole thing off. The rocket built together and then the rocket on display. But this is the re-entry pod. So there's where they got in and out. They can see outside that little window. There's what looks like three different handles, a couple of their little knobs and whatever. Um, and these are like, I think some little extra bits of flotation stuff. So, you know, if the, if the pod lands on its side, the flotation stuff can kind of keep it, at least from being like completely upside down. 
Um, and this is kind of nice. This it's just these little like joint pieces, but you 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 like drop it on and it's kind of sitting there, not quite, and then you just push it down. Perfect, perfect tension. You can move around, but like so it's so simple and it works so well. All right, so that's that's how that works. Let me put this thing back together so you can see what the heck I was doing. There's a little bit of space so you can put these two parts together and then just kind of push it, attach it there. And there we go, nice and easy. So we've got one set of the rocket and then the clips. There's two sets of clips. Make sure to match it up, of course. You want this to actually be attached properly. So that is now attached. And I'm gonna switch now to this so you can see the entire rocket. And then I'm gonna take the rocket apart one more time because there is another way to display it. And I do wanna show you guys everything that you can do. Okay, and this is, so I've got the rocket together. And can you really see where this thing is supposed to be, where the clip is supposed to come through? Where like the difference between rocket one and rocket two is. Um, Cause the line, the line is here. I don't know if you can tell. It is perfect though. It, it's something that like you really can't tell unless you're, you, you built it or you know exactly where you need to look. Um, I mean, there is that little bit of extra, the cheese wedge and this part of the bar is really the indicator point. But just, oh, it is like, it's right there. It's just like nothing, you can barely see it. Anyways, so huge, it's tall. It's over, I think it's one meter or maybe slightly over a meter. I think it's just one meter, like exact. Um, big, huge tall. This is it standing off the floor. I'm sitting in a chair. It's tall. This is me standing up. So yeah, it's like up to my belly button kind of from the floor. Big, 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 big rocket. Now switch back down to this camera view and I'm going to zoom it way, way out and show you the last thing because there was basically three sets for display, three points of display. These two pieces are a little bit smaller. And this one's a little bit larger because it's going to be holding up the more narrow part of the rocket, which totally makes sense. Okay. Now it says that you want to display it. You can display it with all pieces connected. So see if I can do it without accidentally breaking this thing in half because, you know, the, the clip points are good are decent points of attachment, but it's not like some end all be all sort of perfect, you know, perfectly strong thing. There we go. Okay, that was easy. Um, but I was I was pushing these points together. Ah, oh, that's funny. You can kind of move this around in the middle. But I would say keeping it underneath the, the weak point is probably your best bet. Whew. I'm going to zoom this thing out even further. You can't even, <laughs> can't even see it. Okay, it's as far out as it zooms, I think. So, anyways, there it is. There's the rocket on its side. I like that you have the, the choice of being able to display this. Um, you got the lunar lander, and uh, these are just some spare parts. But yeah, that's it. Boom. Huge, awesome. This is already on my top 10 list for favorite sets of 2017. <laughs> I, can, I think I can safely say that. Um, because not only is this thing built wonderfully, um, not only does this thing look awesome, and it's going to be have, you know, it's going to have like a great sort of displayability to it. Um, it's one of the best priced sets for its part count out of any out of any set from 2017 and out of any set that I can think of in recent memory. The only other one being priced at a similarly good price is the the Big Ben, pointing at the Big Ben. Um, that one, sorry, that that Big Ben and this one are like for the parts to price ratio, they're pretty much the best. It doesn't get better than that. So, I give this a positive review, if you can't tell. I, I like this, uh, I like it a lot. I'm gonna do a normal review about this set. Really happy that I got through this in like four and a half hours, like pretty much 2,000 pieces, a little bit less. Nine, 1,969 pieces exact, same year this thing came out. Uh, same, this, same year this thing launched. Um, yeah, good, good set, like it. Everything about it is nice, it's wonderful, it looks great. Um, I like that you can have the option of displaying it 
on either its side like this, or you can just have the whole thing stood up and look really awesome. A lot of these IKEA shelves that I have in the background are like, they're kind of wobbly. Like, look at all that. Like, look, everything's shaking, and I'm not really pulling it that hard. So there's a chance that I might keep this on display laid down because for logistics, oh, man. But it just, it takes up so much space, too. So it's really, it's kind of like your choice, and at least they give you a nice choice where you can have the rocket on display, and, like, they give you the little stand pieces to make it sort of look like it's supposed to be on side display. I think um, that they give you a little bit of choices with that. And that you can just take this thing apart um, and kind of keep it. You can put all all three of the of the rocket pieces all next to each other if you wanted to like show them off that way. You have different you have different space options with this set, which is which is just an added plus, you know. Because sometimes Lego can make really cool sets, but like the logistics of actually having it is very very you know you you can only display it in one way or you can only mess around with it in a certain way. And if you don't have the space, then it's just going to be you know. You know, if it doesn't fit into your life logistically, then um, it can often be the make or break point of actually getting it in the first place. So anyways, this thing gives you options. It's good. It's great. Wonderful. I've been on for a long time. I'm just going to keep rambling if I don't sign off. So thank you, everybody who uh, hung out for the entire live stream uh, or jumped in and said whatever. Um, I appreciate all the comments. Appreciate hanging out with you guys. Sorry, I'm running over my shoelaces. And um, all right. That's it. We're going to be live streaming tomorrow, and today's Thursday, so tomorrow's the last live stream of the week. Live streaming every every weekday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.